Boom, damn it. Did I scare you? <laughs> I'm going to scare y'all a little bit. Just playing a little spoof prank tonight. This this video may not stay up, but just a little something, something to take a jab at the old Big 12 Mafia across the street, across the country, over in the western part of the United States with the Mormons and the, all the other jackasses out there in Utah. <laughs> so uh, just uh, want to jump in here real quick and uh, steal their thunder just a little bit. Seems like a lot of people's been talking about conference realignment. Once again, that seems to be the theme of the offseason. As uh, there's been rumblings and mummers about the Nebraska Cornhuskers, as well as the Texas A&M Aggies, in such a way that you can hardly believe your ears when you hear this kind of stuff. The Nebraska Cornhuskers, who have been in the Big Ten, I guess, what is it now, about nine or ten years? GBR says... <laughs> GBR says Andy Rathman. Randy Rathman's in the house. Randy Rathman also says screw, screw Trev. Damn, ain't, ain't Trev a alumnus in Nebraska? <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. He left for Texas A&M. Ironically, Texas A&M is uh, part of the subject in this video, Andy. Uh, if you would, just share this out to your Nebraska Cornhusker buddies out there. Tell them not to be going over to Big 12 Mafia and all the crazy ass mormonic babblings that go on over there uh, because we know how to talk about college football here and we uh pretty much on point and we can have comedy and factual stuff at the same time big lubbock's in the house what's up outlaw what's up big lubbock share this out to your friends big lubbock get them up in here tell them to come on in here we're gonna we're sort of playing a prank on another podcast tonight that being big 12 mafia just a little aggravation so to speak Nothing more than wrong, wrong with a little prank. I talked to my boy Kuz about it earlier, and uh, he, uh, he had a good chuckle out of it, but he said he didn't want to partake. Not just yet, anyway. Maybe he'll change his mind. Maybe he'll come in here. I did invite Kuz in here. But uh seems like Nebraska and Texas A&M both are not real happy with their current situations and the conferences they're in, even though they're in the two biggest money-making conferences and the United States in college football, that being the Big, the Big Ten and the SEC. Kenneth Qualls is in the house. What's going on, Boomer? Sooner FYT. Yep, that's exactly right. Um, I can also talk a little something, something about some Oklahoma Sooners as well. I got a little list of some players here that may be going in the transfer portal tomorrow. Kenneth Qualls. Uh, I don't know if this is accurate or not. It comes from USA Today Sports. USA Today Sports says that Nick Anderson, Javante Barnes, Makari Vickers, Michael Hawkins, uh, quarterback, and Peyton Bowen, defensive back. One, two, three, four, five players that may be in the transfer portal come tomorrow afternoon. Kane reads in the house. He comes up in here and he says, what's up, that log? Did you hear Rhea Ripley has to vacate the title tonight? She got injured. Yeah, I heard she got injured. I don't know if that's a, a shoot or if that's a real thing. You never can tell wrestling. They tell so many lies and make up so many crazy storylines. You remember back in the day, you may be too young to remember this, Kane, but they actually uh, blew Vince McMahon up in a, um, in a limousine and pretended like he got killed. And that's taking a little too far. And that was right before the Chris Benoit crap. So they, of course, scrapped that storyline because Chris Benoit actually did kill himself and he killed his family. Tell us. Tell us. Okay, I just told you, man. Uh, USA Today Sports says that Nick Anderson, wide receiver, Javante Barnes, running back, McCarty Vickers, defensive back, Michael Hawkins, quarterback, and Peyton Bowen, defensive back are players that are thinking about going into the transfer portal for the Oklahoma Sooners. <laughs> Andy Rathman says he's got raw on too. <laughs> but back to Nebraska and Texas A&M. Seems like um, Texas A&M, even though they signed off on Texas and Oklahoma coming to the SEC, they're not really happy about it. Not so much Oklahoma, but more Texas. Uh, it's been rumblings going around for a while now. And it, the, the rumor has it that Texas A&M may indeed seek out a Big Ten invite. 
That way the Big Ten, who's wanting to go as nationwide as they can because their name of their conference doesn't really constrict them like the Southeastern Conference does, uh, they're looking to get into the southern markets, notably Florida, maybe North Carolina, and they're looking maybe even to get in the state of Texas, which would be optimal for them as they could pick up Texas A&M. Texas A&M could join the Big Ten. I've done a podcast on this before a while back. I'm already ahead of that. And uh, Texas A&M uh, might do that just so they can say they got a little something something on Texas. But I think it would be a mistake. Uh, they'd be either a geographical region a little too far, in my opinion, unless, of course, they can get some more Texas teams to join the Big Ten. Now, they may come in, take Texas A&M, and then take maybe Texas Tech or Oklahoma State and go to the Big Ten. But I don't know if them two teams have that farce that they call the AAU, which we all know is bullshit. Um, people are like, oh, academics matter to them. No, they don't. No, they don't. They, they, their universities may require a higher GPA to get in. Let's say the GPA to get in at um, Illinois is 3.8, and the GPA at Alabama is 3.5 or 3.6. And their players get in. And they're like, well, see, we have academic standards that are higher, so we can't get these certain players. Which, once again, is horseshit because what they do is – they got these tutors. They did it at Notre Dame as well back in the day with the tutor gate. And their tutors do the work for them and not in a legal manner. So it doesn't really matter if your GPA is a 3.8 requirement or a 3.5 requirement. If you're not really doing the work to get the grades, are you really making the grade? No. And that's what I'm saying. All this AAU stuff is just when addressing and patronizing those academia, oblivious, book sense only, no common sense jackasses out there. So, I don't know if Texas A&M got AAU or not. Maybe y'all can tell me. But uh, Nebraska, the rumor has it with Nebraska that um, they lost their AAU status. The Big Ten's been giving them hell about it. They've also said that Nebraska is ranked the lowest in academics in the entire conference for like the last two or three years. And they're giving them hell about it. My thing is with that, someone's got to be last in academics. No matter what conference you're in, somebody's got to be that last team. If you have 14 teams, somebody's going to be 14th. You can't have a 14-way tie usually. You might. Conceivably, you could. But someone's got to be last. So uh, I think that's just, once again, those elitist wannabes of the Big Ten doing the stuff that they do because they've been emasculated in the big money-making sports for so long. Yes, Michigan won the national title this year, but for the most part, outside of Michigan and Ohio Stank, uh, that conference as a whole has been emasculated for quite some time. So Nebraska may get fed up with the bullshit. People talking about the Big Ten kicking them out. The Big Ten may not kick them out. Nebraska and their fans, I think, are tired of the Big Ten uh, elitist hypocrisy. And Nebraska, in my opinion, should leave the Big Ten. Nebraska should maybe call the SEC. Maybe do a swap. Nebraska for Texas A&M. I'd take that swap. Texas A&M cries and wets their diapers and emasculated by Texas. They'd fit right in with the other emasculated 12 or 13 teams in the Big Ten. Nebraska, their culture and the way their people um, – a passion about college football fits right in with the Southeastern Conference. Regardless of geographical uh, wording, Nebraska is basically just like the southern states down here in the southeastern part of the United States. Nebraska would fit right into the SEC. And if they don't go to the SEC, they could always go back to the Big 12 and make the Big 12 more of a valid conference. That way, given the Big 12 more validity in the future, so that the big two don't take over and there can be a big three and we'll have at least some semblance of college football left and not some NFL Super League like some people don't want. Let's see what we got going on here in the comment section. If y'all want to get your comment pushed to top, go ahead and click on the little money dollar sign at the bottom. If you want to donate a few dollars to the program, click on that, write your comment out, then click it the second time to send it. And uh, I'll read it out because it will push it to the top and highlight it. Let's 
Big Lubbock says A&M won't leave the SEC. A&M is about to expand the Blue Bell Park to over 10,000 seating capacity baseball, and you don't do that for the Big Ten. Maybe they don't. Maybe they do. Maybe Texas A&M could be King Dingling in baseball at that point. What do you think? What do y'all think? Yo, would y'all like to have a Texas A&M and um, Nebraska swapping? Or no? I'm going to invite some people up in here for y'all. Yep, might have some a few people in here because this is really just a throwaway show. I'm doing this to aggravate a fellow podcaster by the name of Big 12 Mafia. They got the same thumbnail and the same title as this show. Dude uh, reneged on a couple of interviews, told me that he wanted me to come on his show twice in a week in advance. I put that time slot aside just for him, and he stood me up twice. And not just stood me up twice, but stood me up last minute. Andy Rathman says, we do have a long history with teams in the SEC. If y'all don't mind, jump out of the chat. Smash the like button. That'll help push this out more as well. And we continue to aggravate those Big 12 mafias out there. <laughs> By the way, it's a decent show. It's all right. But uh, just playing a little pranky prank today on this show. As you know. Looks like we got some uh, responses here. Um... See what we got here. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right. See if we can get somebody up in here. Johnny Johns, maybe Killer Breeze, Jeff, the Tuscaloosa County High Jackass. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kenneth Qualls is uh, responding to the five players that may enter the portal tomorrow. Kenneth Qualls says that's pretty much a bullshit list. Hawkins just got to campus. Nick Anderson and Bowen aren't going anywhere. It's Vickers and Barnes. I could see. So it's not really complete bullshit then, right? So Vickers and Barnes could be in the transfer portal, according to Kenneth Qualls, who's a pretty big Oklahoma fan and may have his pulse on that for us. Uh, it would surprise me, though, if uh, – Nick Anderson, um, you know, he made the winning catch against uh, Texas. But so did Isaiah Bond for Alabama against Auburn. He went to Texas. So maybe Nick Anderson's going to pull an Isaiah Bond. Maybe Nick Anderson is going to go to Texas. I don't know. Court Fowl says Nebraska has trouble recruiting. Lincoln is the Lubbock of the Big Ten. Lincoln is the Lubbock of the Big Ten. Well, you know, Court, I would say that you might be right about that, but the problem with that is Nebraska's been able to recruit in the past. They actually got Dylan Raiola, who's a five-star quarterback now, that they, uh, I think they stole away from Ohio Stank or somebody like that. Who was it they took that away from? Who, who did Dylan actually commit to before he, he uh, flipped to Nebraska? Y'all tell me who that was. What team was that? Was Ohio Stank? I can't remember. I don't think Lincoln's in Lubbock, though. Lubbock's never had any real tradition. The tradition at Texas Tech is let's win nine games a year, and that's success. To them. They can win eight or nine games a year, that's success in Lubbock. Nebraska has won, like, I want to say Nebraska's what won what, Andy? Ain't they won like five or six national championships, maybe seven or eight? Andy Rathman's a big Nebraska Cornhusker guy here. He could probably tell us how many. Uh, but I, I can't compare Lincoln to Lubbock. Let A&M go to the big and the SEC can backfield with Texas Tech to keep two teams from Texas. says Big Lubbock. Wouldn't mind having that. I mean, I could, I could live with that. I could live with Big Lubbock. I could, I could live with Mike, Mike Tyson being in there. Not Mike Tyson. What the fuck am I talking about? <laughs> I can, I can live with uh, Texas Tech being in the conference. It would not bother me in the least. Go ahead and add some people to the show. We got legends. Mike, the legend, 
in the house. This well is from Jackass's chin. Let me uh, let Jeff get his steps. Let's bring, bring Big Mike in here. Uh, give us the name of your podcast real quick because I'll butcher it if you don't. It's, I, I put the S on the wrong word every time. <laughs> can you hear me, Jesse? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, it's a Sooner Legends podcast. Sooner Legends or Sooner's Legend? Sooner Legends. Sooner Legends. The legends <laughs> is plural. <laughs> yeah, the legends is plural. The su- <laughs> and the Sooners is singular. <laughs> little little English lesson today, Jesse. Thanks for having me on, by the way. That's right. Well, I'm just in here. I'm spoofing on a guy. Uh, Big 12 Mafia has got a titled show just like this, as well as a thumbnail. It's just like mine. So uh, you may not have known this, but you're part of the chicanery now. So I've been drug you into some shit. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I, Jesse, I, how, how do you I, always I, get get in trouble, brother? <laughs> I, always, I sort of stole his thumbnail and stole his title and made a made a live stream at the exact same time he's doing his. <laughs> 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 he stood me up twice, man. He said he was going. He wanted to be doing an interview for a show a couple of times and scheduled it a week out and took a time slot away from him. I, just at the last minute, and I was just like a little irked about it. So I'm like, you know, at least let me know a day or two in advance that you're going to bail on me or something, you know. Try to. Right. Give me a few hours notice, like you did. You got me a full day notice that you weren't going to be able to do it. Yeah, I, I apologize about that, Jesse. My my brother broke his leg, and yeah. he, he tripped out. For some reason, he was coming out of his house, and he got tangled up and snapped his, <laughs> snapped his leg. <laughs> God bless him. So what are we talking about today, brother? Well, I stole his title, Nebraska and Texas A&M, both talking about they're not really happy with the Big Ten and the SEC. The Big Ten has been talking about how lame Nebraska's academics are. They're ranked last in the Big Ten for like the second or third year in a row. But what I was saying was someone's got to be last anyway, so what's the matter? Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying. I mean, somebody's got to be last. (laughs) I mean, mean, what the hell? Everybody that's last – you gonna kick them out of the conference? <laughs> and you ain't gonna have no teams. Eventually, somebody's you know you kick everybody out last. <laughs> Big Lubbock's trying to push for Texas Tech right here. He's like Texas Tech does not have a problem recruiting. Texas Tech had the highest ranked Big Twelve class, not labeled Texas or OU. So uh, he's saying if Texas A and M were to leave and go to the Big Ten, that Alabama should not Alabama, but the SEC should backfill with Texas Tech. But there's rumors that we might, you know, trade them out for Nebraska. Put Nebraska in, put Texas A&M in the Big Ten, put Nebraska in the SEC because, you know, I think that the weirdness and the cultish type behavior of Texas A&M more fits the Big Ten and Nebraska's culture and their fans and their passion fit the SEC. What yeah. do you think? Well, you know, I think – just from what I know about Nebraska having to play against them in the Big 8 and the Big 12, I mean, I, that'd be a good addition, you know. You're talking about a, a his, history programs. Nebraska's got to be talked about because with Bob Devaney and Tom Osborne and then Frank Solich, I mean, I, it wouldn't bother me seeing Nebraska come to the SEC. Maybe it, maybe it, maybe that would be the the uh, boost that Nebraska would would need to get back get back into prominence again. It probably definitely it probably definitely help the recruiting. Because mm-hmm. I mean, if you if you if you remember Jesse when uh, uh, Nebraska left the Big Twelve to the Big Ten they lost they lost that Texas pipeline in recruiting. I think we got someone who wants to come up in here and ask us a few questions. I'm going to let Jeff Payton come in here. He wants to be a guest on the show. He wants to ask a few questions or maybe he's got a few statements he wants to make. Okay. What's up, 
Jeff Payton, the uh, Tuscaloosa County high whore. Yeah, well, no, not after what happened today with that teacher that got arrested. You see uh, that? Somebody got arrested? County high teacher got arrested for, for sex for the student. Is that the teacher you was having sex with? No, 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 no. <laughs> No, only oh, I, if, if you mean time, yes. <laughs> How you doing, Mike? So you got you got some you got something you want to add to the show? Is there some uh, shot you want to take, or maybe you got some? Yeah, I'm going to talk about Nebraska. In the big in the SEC, that makes a much sense in Stanford in the ACC. Although I will say that it would improve uh, Nebraska's schedule. You imagine Mike having Alabama, Auburn, Tennessee, Georgia, and Florida going to Lincoln for a conference game? Ooh. <laughs> Are you kidding? They would sell that place out in the New York minute. Well, just the Oklahoma Nebraska rivalry being rekindled would be the main thing for me. That's a oh, rivalry. Yeah. Oh, that's a rivalry oh, yeah. that was a lot more important than Okie Pokey State. Yeah, to me, um, Nebraska was a much better rival for Oklahoma than Okie Pokie State. Oh yeah, most definitely. Well, you, 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 and you'll have to bring back Switzer and Osborne. <laughs> That's when it was hottest. I think Switzer owned Osborne. Yeah, he did. I think Osborne was his pitch. To be quite honest with you. Yeah, I'm, Nebraska didn't really start getting the best of Oklahoma until after Swit when Switzer left and Gibbs and all the other cadet. That's when Nebraska uh, think, Osborne got. I the think best Osborne Oklahoma. was happy to see Switzer go. Andy Rathman, who's a Nebraska fan in the comment section, he probably ain't gonna like that too much. <laughs> Just don't bring back Bo Pelini and Lincoln, whatever you do. No man, Bo Pelini probably better than Scott Frost or Callahan. <laughs> I'm going to go to Jack Jack. Uh, well, maybe so, but they they ran him out after three or four years, so maybe it was five. Frank Solich should have never been run off. What do you no, think, no. I, you know what? Frank Solich had that program rolling. I mean, if you remember Eric Crouch, the quarterback, uh, uh, oh, what's his, uh, Rayola as the center. That big fullback Nebraska had, and I mean, Frank Solich had that program just rolling. And uh, this is coming from an OU fan, uh, but I never the, the OU Nebraska rivalry wasn't nothing like the OU Texas rivalry, if that makes any sense, because we hate Texas. But for well, some reason, that that OU Nebraska rivalry. It was a rivalry, but it was left on the field after. It seemed like that there wasn't. I mean, we'd we'd talk a little trash and what have you, but nothing like OU in Texas. And it was just that that was Jesse Year. Remember that that's that was the featured game of the week back back on Thanksgiving back in the day. That's right. Well, you know, that it would remind you of uh, Alabama, Tennessee, Mike. That's what OU Nebraska is. Alabama, Tennessee, as opposed to Alabama and Auburn, or Tennessee and Georgia, or Florida. Andy Rathman says that Bo Pelini was the best coach that they've had since so much, which is what I was saying, too. I mean, Pelini was better than the mother jackasses they hired. Um, but they should never got rid of Solich because he done a real good job with the Ohio <coughs> Bobcats over in the MAC. He uh, done a real good job at Ohio. Mm -hmm. And I tell you what, I, there's three or four of them games I, that I went live to watch at Lincoln. Let me tell you something, it gets colder than a well digger's ass up there. <laughs> Guess we lost there, Jesse. He has something going on in the background, something beeping. Big brother heard him talking shit. Come to lock his ass up <laughs> about the county high sex scandal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what were you saying? 
Uh, I was saying that I was fortunate to go to a few uh, OU Nebraska games live at Lincoln up, up there at Memorial Stadium. Let me tell you something. It gets colder than shit up there. Oh, ain't nothing. <laughs> I've been watching that game. Ain't nothing between you and the North. Do what, brother? We used to play that game around Thanksgiving, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, Last Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. it's cold as hell in Nebraska in, 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 in <laughs> November, man. <laughs> Shit, it gets cold here in Alabama in November. I know it gets cold in Nebraska. Yeah, because if you think if you think about it, up in Nebraska, there ain't a tree between you and the North Pole to stop that north wind. <laughs> That's right. There, Sean, there James, Sean James says Osborne owes Switzer a big thank you. If Switzer hadn't got himself run off, Osborne never probably never sees a national championship. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we got Andy Rathman in there too. As I said, he's a Nebraska guy, so they're going back and forth debating about that. Sean James says it was 12 and 5 in favor of Switzer. Mm hmm. Yep. So he had his number pretty much. He did beat him a few times. Yeah. Uh, it seemed like uh, we, we had that OU Nebraska in the 70s. Besides 71, we, we, uh, we lost in 78 where we had to rematch nebraska and orange bowl but they're about 80 81 when uh 82 83 ish when uh nebraska had a uh, turner gill and all them guys shit <laughs> man uh, the 1995 nebraska team to me and i'm an alabama fan you're an oklahoma fan mm -hmm. best team of all time to me they didn't play not one close game that year Who's that? Nebraska 95. Tommy mm -hmm. Frazier. Tommy Frazier, Nebraska 95, best team of all time. Yeah. Yeah, Tommy Frazier was a beast. No doubt. If y'all don't mind, if y'all in the comment section there, you can just jump out five seconds and smash that like button for us. It'll sort of trip the algorithm and uh, maybe get us a few more people up in here. Sort of slow tonight. I figured it would be because there's sort of a spoof upon somebody else's podcast but also we got Monday Night Raw going on and we got a lot of wrestling fans in here <laughs> so. now I tell you Nebraska they back in the uh, 80s they had their version of Brian Bosworth at linebacker and that's Broderick Thomas that guy was freaking good I forgot about Broderick Thomas he was a badass yeah B-Rod was a uh, <laughs> He didn't. He wasn't afraid to take a hit uh, or or hit you. <laughs> hey, Andy, add us some Nebraska people up here and get them to subscribe to the channel, man. I, I love Nebraska fans just like Oklahoma, Alabama, all these traditional powers that that you know have um, mutual respect for each other. I feel uh, there are some blue bloods out there that don't have any respect, like yeah. USC skittle shitters and the Texas long turds. And Seems like it. <laughs> yeah, that and have you noticed, Jesse, that Missouri fans are starting to be stupid and not uh, for lack of better terms, stupid. Have you God? I mean, how many times has Missouri won eleven games in, in a season? <laughs> a long time. Exactly. And hell, they ain't won a national championship since nineteen fifty eight. That's what happens with, team, with teams like that, that that never win. They win 11 games, and suddenly they think they're the next King Dingling of everything. Yeah. And, uh, so, like, you know, everybody said Clemson was taking over, and then, of course, they didn't. Uh, they just went away. Yeah. And so, like, uh, was that song by Motley Crue or Aerosmith that says, don't go away, mad, just go away? <laughs> <laughs> That's what Missouri fans need to do. Y'all need to just go on and enjoy 11-win season. Quit exactly. talking about smack because now you got to follow it up. Can you win 11 games two seasons in a row? Which is something that teams like Oklahoma, Alabama, Nebraska, and Ohio State and teams like that have been able to do since 1900. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Missouri does it once every freaking Haley's Comet and they think they've done something, you know? <laughs> The Haley Comets. That 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 ought to be a football team, shouldn't it? 
Yeah, they should be the Haley Comet Tigers from Columbia, Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, Missouri boy. <laughs> right in the middle of nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody give a shit about St. Louis or Kansas City. <laughs> or Columbia. <laughs> no, man, nobody cares about that shit. Y'all right there on the Madrid fault line, y'all probably going to be the first one that gets that big-ass earthquake if you're not careful. <laughs> Talking all that smack. <laughs> they knock something loose with all that bullshit coming out of their mouth, right? <laughs> yeah. and it seems like they've been targeting Oklahoma for some reason. I don't know what to do <clears throat> in Oklahoma, man. I just know there was a big rivalry. Hey, did did you see that all the NIL money that Missouri put out last year, and then they they did some figuring with with how much they spent along with <laughs> with what money they had, and they was one dollar to the good. <laughs> they did what now? They 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 took they took the total amount that they spent in NIL plus the money that they had. I'm for lack of a better term in reserve or something and they they totaled all that together and they had one dollar left <laughs> in missouri yeah <laughs> damn <laughs> so like i need to float alone somewhere or something <laughs> and they want to say oklahoma's broke Shit. oh god andy i've i spent time at fort lost in the woods i hated that every damn minute of that place god almighty andy rathman says i went to basic training ait at fort leonard wood in missouri mm -hmm. and a damn tornado go over my damn head strapped into a barrier <laughs> 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 damn <laughs> boy that's a wild so what is it with Missouri and, and Oklahoma people now what is it what, why has Missouri got such an axe to ground with y'all did y'all emasculate them when they were in the big 12 we we've been they they've been our punching bag since the big eight jesse <laughs> i mean it, they probably a worse punching bag than just about anybody outside of okie pokey state yeah that, that's the real punching bag right there <laughs> <laughs> it seemed like because uh from what i've gathered and what i've studied which their field is named after legendary coach don ferro and him and Bud Wilkinson coached together at Iowa pre-flight school. And ever since Bud Wilkinson, when he took over at Oklahoma and he beat Don Ferro, Missouri has had this beef, beef with us ever since. And they can't get it through their thick-ass skulls that we own them. <laughs> like I said, Missouri is one of those uh, flavor of the decade kind of teams. They'll have one or two good years and 10 years, and they, they start acting like South Carolina Gamecocks. South Carolina's the same damn way, man. Yeah, North Carolina the same way. And all the way South Carolina strung together two uh, double-digit winning seasons. They had a legendary coach there for a while named Steve Spurrier. Mm -hmm. Without Steve Spurrier, uh, South Carolina don't have much football history. Now, they did have Lou Holtz there for a little while. Yeah. But, you know, without getting two old-ass legends – the coach them, they don't have any football history whatsoever. Exactly. Exactly. But yeah, this beef with Missouri's been going. I and and another thing, I guess, since we're since we're not that for since we're right close together up the turnpike, you know, you got that got that little rivalry, you know. I, I hell I don't know. Like I said, they they've been our punching. They've been our punching bag since the big eight, and they can't they can't get over their self. And let them beat us one time, and oh my god! <laughs> well, it's just like Okie Pokey State. Yeah, and see, I don't get it, man. I've been I've been grilling the hell out of them because I thought I was doing y'all a favor, but I had a lot of Oklahoma fans get on my ass about that. They're like, "Don't be picking on Oklahoma State." Shit, they're in the Sooner State. I'm like, whatever, <laughs> dude. Don't worry. Y'all don't take football serious as I do because we hate Auburn. <laughs> you will never, ever, 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 and I'm talking about since Pat Jones coached there, Jimmy Johnson, you will never, ever see me pull for OSU in any sport. Mm -mm. Won't happen. Not today. 
They had the, some characters there, hadn't they? That we always talk about the A and M cult. That OSU place up there, Stillwater. It's it's a cult in in its own too. I mean, they're the ones that spawn less miles on everybody. Oh my God! You know, less miles end up going to LSU, and he took Nick Saban's team that Nick Saban had built for him and won a few national won a national championship. And then after he got his recruits in there, shit started going downhill, especially mm-hmm. when Nick Saban came back. And all that grass eating that they thought was so cute suddenly wasn't as cute anymore. It was more like, this guy's weird. <laughs> <laughs> he's out there picking up grass and eating it and shit. I ain't going tell him what's been on that grass, man. And, you know, and and I, I get this right here at home. You know, Jesse, you've known me a while. You know, you know I have a, a deep appreciation for the SEC, Alabama, Georgia. Because back in the 70s, hell, Oklahoma wasn't on TV a lot. And I seen Georgia, Alabama, back when Tennessee was good, back when uh, Florida was good. So I've always had a deep – and, boy, you – around some of my diehard Sooner buddies, my God, when I mentioned Alabama or Georgia, oh, my God, I, I'm cussing them. <laughs> no, no shit. Um, Sean James backs you up. Sean James says, legend is 100%. We've owned Mizzou. Put the OU at the end. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Since they joined the conference decades ago. And he's yep. got a question for me. What is it with Auburn being Bama's kryptonite? You're right. Actually, Auburn is the only team that's actually not had Alabama win more than five games in a row on them. Although this year we did beat them for a fourth year in a row. It's the first time we beat Auburn four years in a row since Bear Bryant. A lot of wow. people don't realize that. Uh, since Bear Bryant left, they've been with us, you know, pretty much. They've uh, held their own. Uh, they're the only team you would think, it being a small state, that we'd be able to own them. But they've pretty much, you're right, they have sort of been our kryptonite. Hell, going down to Auburn is a, is a boogaboo, man. I'll be honest with you. That place is like, it's got some voodoo going on. They call it the barn for a reason. And, uh, Unless you're a sorry ass team like New Mexico State, you usually have a hard time coming in here winning. I think they just overlook New Mexico State, but it's hard to win in Auburn. Yeah, Jordan Hare has its own juju. <laughs> Which is why places like Tuscaloosa normally don't have juju, as he called it, is because we win all the time. That's right. We're just that damn good, as Triple H would say. <laughs> I am actually looking forward when OU plays. Uh, Alabama at Tuscaloosa because I've never been been to Bryant Denny Stadium and I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah. If you come down, I'll show you around. I got, I got. Okay, the, brother. I'm I'm a good tour guide. I grew up in Tuscaloosa. I'm not just an Alabama fan. I grew up here. Uh, oh, my, mother, my mother worked for the university for 37 years. Oh wow! This university literally clothed and fed me. So my 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 loyalty runs more deeper than just sports. Yeah. So when people tell me I don't have a right to question Nick Saban because he's a legend, I'm like, I absolutely do because I've been here longer than Nick Saban. <laughs> <laughs> I get the same thing, Jesse. At people tell me, you don't have a right to say nothing about Oklahoma. I'm like, dude, I've been with this team since 1970. What? Well, come right. on now. <laughs> Nick Saban didn't make Alabama. And Alabama and Nick Saban were hand in hand. It was this perfect storm. Mm-hmm. Neither one of them made the other. But, you know, Alabama's won national championships with five different head coaches, not just Nick Saban. Exactly. And, and people say, well, y'all just bear Bryant and Saban. That's not true either. So. Exactly. You know, you know, and it's like I tell everybody. It's just like with Oklahoma. Y'all not just Barry Switzer. Y'all not just uh, any a number of coaches that you won a national title with. Exactly. And, it, and it's like I tell people, I said – like you, Jesse, uh, I just, my love for the Sooners, you know, seeing, you know, I grew up during the best time to be a Sooner, you know, we, Bear Bryant appreciated Oklahoma when we tied them in the Blue Bonnet Bowl in 70, and he seen firsthand the wishbone, well, Bear goes to the bone, and, uh, and all them great teams I got to see growing up through the 70s, you know, 
went through the probation time, you know. So, <laughs> you know, I, I've always felt that that uh, Alabama and Oklahoma had sort of a kinship in a way. Yeah, and they're the only two major programs that claim crimson. I think is their color. Mm-hmm. Yep. The rest of them's red, maroon, or in Texas A&M's case, moron. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and people are weird to me, man. Oh man, I went to College Station one year. There, it was uh it was that two thousand game where we where we had to come from behind. And oh my God, Jesse, that that place down there is just it's cult. <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say. And they do some stuff that's pretty sketchy, man. They sure do. I'm not homophobic, but. <sighs> Same time, man, you can keep that shit to yourself. <laughs> you need to go into one of those Aggie tents or whatever y'all do <laughs> around that freaking bonfire that fell on your ass. <laughs> they couldn't even build a bonfire right. I know it, man. That's that's crazy. I ain't that trying is to absolutely that, you know, crazy. Actually some people died from that. I shouldn't be making fun of it, but yeah. Same time, I mean, some Texas A&M shit. <laughs> Jetty yeah. Wilmot says he thinks it was back in 2007. Missouri was ranked number one with Chase Daniels and was talking big shit to Oklahoma, beat them in the regular season and in the Big 12 championship, costing Missouri a national title game. That's probably why they don't like y'all. <laughs> I'm glad well, you gave me that historical nugget there because now I know what's up. Y'all screwed them out of maybe their one shot at a national title in 100 years. <laughs> Well, J.D. Wilmoth would probably, probably remember this also, that in that Big 12 championship game that year, we played it in San Antonio, and uh, Chase Daniels got to talking a little smack to Curtis Lofton, and uh, he found out how hard Curtis Lofton hits. <laughs> now, I'll be honest, if I, if I was to play college football, if I was an offensive player, I'd probably never talk smack, because you're, you're going to be the one that's going to be getting a hit, usually. <laughs> Unless you throw an interception or there's somebody returning a fumble, you're not going to be doing a hit. Yeah. The, the smack talk shit should be reserved for defensive players only. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's like, you know, old Mike Gundy, I'm a man, I'm 54, 55, I'm, I'm over the hill, whatever the fucking age he is. Um, talking <coughs> smack about Bosworth and yada, yada, yada. I didn't go to parties where Bosworth was at because there's no telling how he would act. And he was doing cocaine and all sorts of other shit. Bosworth told him, hey, man, if you want to, we'll meet at midfield for this game. <laughs> we'll, we'll rehash the history if you want. <laughs> and Boz still looks like he could he could get salty with somebody. <laughs> Thunder OU Sooners in the house. He's got perfect attendance, by the way. He's always in here. Oh, yeah. He says, uh, Outlaw, finally talk about Missouri fans. I don't know Missouri fans too well. They haven't been in the SEC that long. Y'all could probably tell me more about Missouri fans. I don't know them that well. I don't think Missouri's ever been to Tuscaloosa since they've been in the SEC. I'm not sure about that. Hmm. That's weird. I just realized that. <laughs> That's just like Georgia's never been to um, College Station since they've been in the SEC. That is crazy weird that but is weird. we'll get that shit solved real quick because i think missouri's coming to tuscaloosa <laughs> <laughs> so we'll find out about missouri fans well we've never been to jordan hair and we've played we've played auburn twice in our in our history so well, y'all ain't missing never... anything huh? <laughs> <laughs> i wish they weren't all right i was like we call them west georgia man we don't even claim them <laughs> 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 that's hilarious like that's like Oklahoma stool water <laughs> yeah stool water I don't live too far from stool water and I have to go pay my light bill All right, tell me you keep talking about Missouri fans what is he leading us up to here do you get you have any um experience with Missouri fans are they pretty crappy fans or oh yeah yeah I've I've been to games when I was little and through a young teenager. God, they are god awful. 
even back in the 70s and 80s they're they're just terrible fans now there's a cut there's a couple that i'm friends with here in oklahoma that are missouri fans but i they're the exceptions to the rule but in my experience at live games at either not at Columbia or Norman, they are, Oh God, they, they're, my brother calls them a bunch of inbred hillbillies. <laughs> brother ain't been to the barn yet down in Lee County. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see a bad seed. That's some bad seeding down there. Something ain't right. <laughs> then people give Harvey Updike. I don't know if you know who Harvey Updike is. He's the guy that poisoned the trees down at Auburn. Um, he poisoned the trees down there that they used to roll. Mm -hmm. And they give him $800,000 restitution for those trees. Now I can understand punishing the guy because it's supposedly a landmark, even though those trees weren't indigenous to Lee County. And they were already killing them by pressure washing them. They would pressure wash them damn trees after they rolled them with toilet paper. That can't be good for a tree. <laughs> no. <laughs> so the trees were already dying. So Harvey sort of done a, you know, he done a Kaborkian thing for them. And he went down and poisoned them. And they give make $100,000 restitution. I'm like, man, they give uh, child molesters less than that shit. Boy, y'all got y'all's priorities skewed, man. Y'all down punishing people for killing trees and not even punishing child molesters down there. <laughs> says here J.D. Oh, like Chase, Chase Daniels quit talking shit after he got knocked on his ass a couple of times by Curtis Lofton <laughs> I don't even remember Kurt, Curtis Lofton I guess he was a pretty he good was, he was out of that post 2000 national championship team, Curtis Lofton would probably be in my top three all time Bob Stoops linebackers post 2000. He was a hell of a linebacker and fast, very fast. You got another singer that wants to pop in here. Um, I done forgot his name. I ain't seen him in so long. <laughs> Is it that crazy Cajun? <laughs> I don't know, man. He might be a little Cajun. I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> What's his name? You remember his name? Uh, starts Seven. with a K. Hmm. Cajun? No, Cajun starts with a C. My bad. Yep. I'm, sp I'm spelling like Auburn today. Kill, kid. Kill. Killer bees, killer, killer knees. Killer kill on his knees. <laughs> there he is. You better watch killer out. You better watch out. <laughs> saucy. Kill on the knees. Like them Oklahoma softball girls out there in BYU got put on their knees. <laughs> the last time I checked, they lost two out of three. BYU <laughs> did. I'm just, just, just trying to keep it straight. Yeah, just, you just should never lose, there. <laughs> you should never lose to a bunch of Mormon women, man. <laughs> well, you know, man, when you lose three times in two years, you know, the law of averages <laughs> tends to catch up with you a little bit. So <laughs> I'm totally I'm totally fine with them having lost four whole games this year. It's okay. This ain't, this ain't four, this is four times in one year. I know, I know. It's crazy. <laughs> Actually, what's so funny, you know, I was being sarcastic when I was taking that shot. Uh, there's actually some Oklahoma Center fans after they lost to BYU just got on there saying, man, you was right, man. Our softball team sucks. I'm like, see, that's exactly the response I was trying to get right there. Y'all fell that, right into that shit. That goes to show you, man, that you just can't – like there's no – there's no – there's no there's no satisfying people enough. Mm -mm. You know, like it, – it, and, and it really is true because – I, I'm I'm even a little guilty of it myself. Not that I got online and publicly and said anything, but when they lost the series to Texas, I the the initial thought did run through my head like, oh shit, man, do we have a problem? And it's just like you get so used to them winning all the time that when they just lose a game, it it, it seems like something has to be wrong because they just win that much. But you know, 
anybody that follows any kind of competitive sports knows that that it's just impossible to continue uh, that kind of pace. You exactly. Know? So the topic of the day that we started with was, you know, Texas A&M and Nebraska both are having situations with their current conferences. And I was saying that, you know, we are just trade out. You know, Texas A&M go to the Big Ten, Nebraska come to the SEC. I, I'd, I'd love for Nebraska to come to the SEC, honestly. That's what I said. I mean, and by the way, let me I, – I don't mean to get off track of what you – of the topic you want to bring up. We can talk Nebraska and SEC all day long, but I just want to go back to something you were asking about. Missouri has never – let me – I just want to get the Missouri shit straight, okay? <laughs> Missouri said they're going to set your ass straight when they get in the SEC. They're going to get in the SEC. They said they're going to – well, that's fine. That's fine. There's, I guess there's a first time for anything. But I'm just trying to tell you that Missouri is pissed off. No, I, it's, it's not even that they're pissed. It's that they've been in the weak division of the SEC the whole time. They have outside of Georgia, you know, outside of Georgia, on any one given year, they, there's one team they might have to worry about in in the in the in the West, and they finally got a little bit of juice going. Anybody that's following recruiting at all knows that they are spending unsustainable amounts of money, and that's fine. Wait a minute now, Mike Legend said that they're out, but they got one dollar left. Yep. Did you see but that, might- Bruce? That might be so because they've been spending it like it's fucking like they're not going to have it. You know, I mean, they're spending it. It's it's insane the amount of money that they're spending. And yep. so, I mean, just the amount of money that they paid to get Caden Green away from Oklahoma, from what I understand, is is uh, they're not even going to have the money to feed these guys in the lunch rooms down there at the uh, athletic no. facilities. They're going to have to go down to the Dollar General and get some damn cupcakes or something to feed them. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> You know how it goes. The, the you should boosters, never tell me about that dollar, man. I'm gonna give them hell about that shit. The boosters will never. The boosters will not keep spending that kind of money without results. Mm-hmm. And Missouri is still Missouri. I don't care who they get as their coach. I don't care how much money they spend. They are never gonna be a perennial champion or a contender or a threat. They're just not. I, I, I've never. They've never been that in their entire existence as a program. That's not me trying to be rude. That's me being real. They've never mm-hmm. been that in the entire existence of their program. Their best sports claim to fame was a little bit of basketball juice in the fucking 80s and the 90s. They haven't been shit before <laughs> that or since in any sport. And so now they got a little bit of juice. They got the arrogance of being in the SEC. They're bet, you know. And so they want to try to pounce on Oklahoma while they perceive weakness. And that's fine. I mean, that's no different than what everybody else does against Oklahoma. Everybody wants to beat OU, and that mm-hmm. tells you everything you need well, to know right there. Well, that's right, man. It's not sustained. They've had probably double-digit win seasons maybe two or three times in their entire history. They have an 11-win season. Suddenly, they think that they're going to be national championship contenders each and every year. And that's – I don't well, see it happening. So It won't happen. It I mean, it it's happen. like Thunder O. You said. I mean, maybe they're going to upgrade their facilities too. I don't know if they're going to be able to with that one dollar that Mike was talking about. But <laughs> Missouri's football stadium looks like a high school football stadium. He's right. It's it does. reminds me of Colorado Stadium. You know, um, that Mork and Mindy Stadium that they got out there in Boulder. Yep, Folsom Field. You ever watch Mork and Mindy? Back in the oh yeah, yep, I did. I used to love watching them run on that fucking football field out there in Colorado, man. And uh, at the beginning of more community, you know, there'd be the big Colorado thing back there in the background behind a goalpost. <laughs> I used to think that was pretty cool back in the day, but once you get older, you realize it's a pretty shitty stadium. <laughs> it is. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a fucking goat farm, man. Oh, it's not- it what do y'all think? I forgot to bring this up in the last podcast, but they I saw an article that speaking of Colorado. Should I think it's Shadir. Um, oh, prime time son Shadir finally attended a class for the first time in a year. What's up with that? How's he can only he can, he can attend classes just once a year? I know he's doing it online, but to me, 
a lot of them online classes lend to players being able to cheat and get people to do the work for them. <coughs> well, <coughs> I know that you're asking that question rhetorically. You have to be. <laughs> <laughs> you, you have to be. Because obviously the whole Dion Shador and the other kid who I think is gone now and graduated, the whole thing is is a is a farce to start off with. So I I, I can't wait now. It's a it's a guarantee Shador is gonna get drafted into the NFL and he's probably depending on what team he goes to, he's probably gonna start in the NFL at some point, and I can't wait. I can't wait for him – well, for every what, every what anyone who knows about football knows, I just can't wait for that to happen. Well, another question I'd like to ask, and I'll ask this in the last podcast, and I'll direct this one to you, Mike. Um, Contime Deion Sanders said that uh, he's not all about getting players that's just wanting a bag in NIL. I and thought then- – and then he's got the three highest valueized players on his team. His two sons and Travis Hunter are making the most money of just about any player in the United States. So how can he say that, Mike? And I thought I thought he said, "Come find me." You know where I'm at. Come find me. If, what do you think, Mike? That <laughs> that, that don't that sired my tobacco. I know Mike's I mean, a big prime time fan, so I want to get his take on it. It, yeah, I'm not a prime time fan, haven't been. I, I, I'm like Jesse, I got a beef with him. What he did to, to uh, oh, what's his face that you uh, used to commentate baseball, but that's neither, it's neither hither, hither nor yon. But if you're going to take a bag over, that is stupid. I agree. That totally is freaking agree. stupid. For him to say it's not about the money, it's just insulting everybody's intelligence, man. It just makes me want to slap him. Because you that know, just, it's all about the money. That That's just told me why. Wow. He don't want a culture up there. It's all about the – it's all about that. Right there. <clears throat> well, that's all he's ever been about. Yeah. So that's not – that's no big surprise. I mean, you got yeah. his, his sons showing off their watches, their bling-bling at halftime of the game. Against Stanford, and then they epically lost a twenty-nine point lead. <laughs> hey, you know what? I'm glad they got their shit stolen out of their lockers. Because if you're if you're at college, driving around in a fucking Rolls Royce, flashing a Rolex watch, by God, it needs to happen to you. And somebody needs to key his damn car on campus. Yeah, they 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 just rubbing it in. That's all they're doing. They're just rubbing yeah, it I in. Agree. You know, because totally you get. Agree. Whether you're at Colorado, OU, wherever, you got some le- legit kids going there to get an education, to benefit for them, to give them a better life, and then you got some jock here driving around in a in a million dollar Rolls Royce, wearing three or four different Rolex wit- wrist watches. Uh, uh-uh, that no, I'm glad they got their shit stolen. Well, <laughs> they need to be more careful anyway, regardless. But I'm I'm with you. You know that. It's just the wrong – I don't know, man. It's just the wrong damn – it's just not what it's supposed to be about, man. Mm-mm. They're going to have to do something, man. Uh, I'm almost for this whole NFL Super League that they're talking about creating, letting the NFL come in and take over and put some rules down so these players can't leave every year. Make them sign contracts, man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. don't get me wrong. I don't want y'all to think that I don't that I'm not for the players getting some kind of money for their NIL, but do it for what what am I looking for, Jesse? Damn it, I can't I, I can't think of a word right now. I'm I'm all for it, but I think it's being abused, if that makes any sense. Yeah, there's no fine. It line. is being abused. It's either getting they're either getting bukus of money and it's out, out of control, like you said with Missouri. Texas A&M did the same thing. They blew their wide on one recruiting class, and then they went from being number one to being number 25 the next year. And how yeah. do you do that? <laughs> because you was paying everybody. We got mad about it and threatened to slap Nick Saban and all sorts of shit, man. I'm just like, dude, all Saban said was that our boosters need to pick it up. <laughs> 
and help donate money for the impending NIL era. <coughs> and that we our boosters weren't giving as much money to our program as Texas A&M's boosters. And uh, it sounded like though Jimbo had some kind of guilty feeling about something to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I totally you know, agree. If, if I was Jimbo Fisher, because y'all y'all know y'all y'all said this buyout several times since he got let loose from you know that was a lucrative buyout by any any stretch. Yeah, I get fired on if, purpose. If my name was Jimbo Fisher, I'd say <laughs> screw you football, and I'd be living on a yacht somewhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Take me and kill Breeze and Mike, and we'll all go. <laughs> Have tailgate parties in Nagasaki with the Nagasaki egg rolls. <laughs> <laughs> Go get us a freak nasty in Thailand too while we're over there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> but no, this this NIL stuff, it, it I've heard you and KB talk about it a bunch. It's the between NIL and the transfer portal, it is Dodge City. 1889 wide Earp Cowtown shoot them up, bang, bang. And something needs to be done. Yeah, they've got to get they've got to get some kind of order to it. You know, it just has to that just has to be. Otherwise, it's just it's already happening. I mean, it's turning into the NFL, you know, the NFL is what it's turning into. Yeah. It just it just sucks, man. It you know it, at the end of the day de- at the end of the day, <coughs> if that's how it's going to end up going, and it just it just you're going to be good whenever your team is throwing up a lot of money and your program is throwing up a lot of money, and you're not going to be if they're not doing that. It's just like there's no, you know, part of the part of the beauty of college football and college sports to me is the the you know the love it's the it's the it's everybody pulling behind one common passion right which is your team Mm -hmm. and your university Mm -hmm. and so don't get me wrong there's always been the the envelopes in the end zone after the game and the hand and the hundred dollar handshakes like jesse likes to call it i mean that's always been around i i get that but you know they also just seem to it seemed like at least that the players had some love for the universities, but how can, how can you, man, you can't even pretend like there's any love or any loyalty to the universities with the way that it is now. And if that's how it is, if that's how it is, how do you get behind? Cause look at a player like Caleb Williams, man. How do you get behind a player like that? Even if, no matter what year he's in, because you know if your team's not winning a national championship or if you're not a national champion threat, then regardless of what he thinks about your program or not, there's a good chance he's leaving if he can go somewhere else and, and in his mind, have a better shot. And so it's what, like are, who, are, who are we pulling for now when they're on the field? Or who are we pulling for? Like you can't just recruit high school players anymore. You have to recruit your own players again, the ones you already recruited right. that, that are sophomores. You have to re-recruit them, and then you got to re-recruit everybody else's players too that are sophomores. Yeah. I mean, it's it really is the same. You know, people under the age of 35 won't even remember this. Hell, maybe even under the age of 40. But, you know, there was a time that in the pros – your players played on your team damn near their whole career. Mm-hmm. Started and retired with the same jersey. And so people don't remember that NFL. You know, now everybody's used to every year you reset and, oh, let me find out what players are on my team now. And that's mm-hmm. what kind of sucks about it. But it's you sort know? of like a delayed trickle down effect, sort of trickle right. down in the college game. Then you have the coaches in college jacking up the universities, as me and you talked about before, for astronomical salaries. And now the coaches want to bitch about the players want money, and these coaches are making ten million a year. I'm just like, you know, y'all are a little bit of the problem yourself. Yeah. Well, you know, when you look at at coaches' salaries, 
nowadays. I'll, I'll just, to tell you, to give you an insight on it, when Benny Owen coached at Oklahoma back before we was a state, he didn't make enough money that he would only come to Norman to coach, and then after season, he would go back to Ark City, Kansas. He didn't He yeah. didn't have enough money from his salary to live in Norman. Yeah. So, so if yeah. that kind of gives you a – but going back to what you was saying, Killer, Back when I back when I was watching pros all the time, when the season would kick off, I could guarantee you that as far as my team, I was going to see Roger Stallback, Tony Dorsett, Drew Pearson, Ed Two Tall Jones, all them greats from the Dallas Cowboys. I and they were there. And nowadays, yeah. like you say, you you can't you, you can't get into a team anymore <laughs> because for one they. They uh, take free agency and contract seventeen million dollar contract. God dang! <laughs> you no, know, the transfer portal opens tomorrow, right? Yes. Do what? The transfer portal opens tomorrow. Yep. Happy transfer portal eve for those who celebrate. I don't. Yeah, I get tired of these people saying, "Oh man, they had the greatest transfer portal recruiting class." Talking about Colorado and shit. Yeah. Man, do y'all not realize that these players are leaving usually because they're not good enough to start where they're at? Exactly. Well, they were a five star in high school. Don't mean shit. Because, you know, five star don't mean shit if you're not good enough to play, man. You just got <laughs> you got misjudged or someone didn't evaluate you right, man. Well, and you got some positions where five star really doesn't mean <laughs> shit. Like offensive line, I mean, you you got you got Five star bust every year on the offensive line. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, five star is definitely the, the the star rating thing is is dubious. Yeah, I I here what I do, Killer Breeze. When I when I see that we're after a recruit or we get crystal ball for them or they actually commit, the first thing I'm doing is I'm I'm not looking at the stars. I'm going to look at their highlights and see what they what they what they do on the field at their perspective respective position. And it's like this Malik Hawkins kid, uh Mike Hawkins Jr.'s little brother that committed OU. They I don't know if you've seen the meltdown about because he's a three-star and he's going to suck, but if you go and look at his highlights, he's playing cornerback. His responsibilities that he was covering on a wide receiver, that wide receiver never did get past him. Yeah. And if and if you remember, KB, or Jesse, you, you might even remember, their daddy, Mike Hawkins Sr., what, he was in the league for nine years. No, yeah, no. Listen, the the whole thing, you know, it was the same. They did the same thing with Eli Bowen. It just like these kids, these kids are good. They're on their own right, and um, at a certain point, you got to trust the staff's ability to analyze talent. You know, mm-hmm. and at the end of the day, man, you got to love everything that you're hearing out of out of spring camp with with the with the new defensive players. Both of you know all of them. The 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 linemen, the ends, they all of them are, are shining out and are showing out. And um, and so, you know, there was what one of them was a five star. The rest of them were four stars. Fuck yeah, right. David Stoney, he was a five star, and the rest of them were four. And, and Jaden Jackson. That, well, that's what uh, I was about to one. say. He he was a three star until he signed until until uh, national signing day and they gave him his four star on 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 signing day. Well, and here's the funny thing about Jaden Jackson. He's a it's a great point. It's it's very similar to Dusty Dvorak, right? Because Dusty mm-hmm. was a three star also. Jaden Jackson. I actually watched a couple of IMG games because I wanted to watch David Stone and and both games that I watched IMG play on TV. Jaden Jackson. By far, by far, impressed me more than anyone else on the defense. He was he was more disruptive to me than I than it seemed like David Stone was than the games that I watched. And 
to your point, he was barely a four star. Now, everything you're hearing is that he's the one more than Stone that is more likely to start as a freshman than David Stone. David Stone was the ballyhoo, highly rated, all world defensive lineman. And everything out of camp is that Jaden Jackson is turning heads as much or more than anybody. And mm-hmm. he's barely a four star. Well, so, as, as far as the transfer portal goes, the USA Today Sports give the top five players that may transfer on each team. You want to hear Oklahoma's? Sure. Go ahead. Y'all probably going to disagree with some of these. But they said Nick Anderson, wide receiver. No chance. No. Javante Barnes, running back. Possible. Possibly. Makari Vickers, defensive back. No chance. No. no. Michael Hawkins, quarterback. No, no chance. And Peyton Bowen, defensive back. <laughs> Negative. Never. <laughs> Never. I give I, him one of those. And gonna, only... He's going to go back to Notre Dame. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. By the way, some little, some little dork, and I know you're probably not listening, but if you are, you little punk ass on Twitter, some spastic name like not a you know, regular sports fan or whatever bet me a million dollars that Peyton Bowen would not be starting for the Sooners in his sophomore would not be playing for the Sooners starting his sophomore year. So <laughs> if you're listening out there, you little <laughs> I almost I almost got uh if you're listening, you owe me a million dollars, you little punk ass, you know. Bitch. Yeah. Well, I just try to avoid the. I was F- actually going to go. I try to avoid so I'll slip and say the F word, uh, but you know, I try to avoid the F and M Fs a little bit. But you know, I did cuss a little bit. I'm bad stuff. about it. I'm <laughs> bad about it. I was about to drop some some non gay friendly terms on him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how else to say it than that. Scott Schrader said, "Send him down here to Nebraska." Nebraska, I think, is going to surprise people this year. A lot of people didn't give up on Nebraska. Uh, they got Dylan Raiola, right? He's a five-star quarterback that was – I think he was originally committed to Ohio State, right? Correct. Or Georgia, wasn't it? Or it was Georgia. Uh, he started off committed to Georgia, and then I think he flipped it to Ohio oh, State, well. and then I think he flipped it to Nebraska. Yeah, right. I think you're right. It was either Georgia or Ohio State, but he was, he was one of the big dogs that they flipped. But I think it was because – his uncle or somebody like that's on the coaching staff. And Nebraska. his daddy, his that daddy, be, was that could be the break that Nebraska needs to re maybe revamp that program, get it a kickstart for it. Because mm-hmm. I just I don't miss Nebraska beating my team, but I miss Nebraska being relevant, just like I'm sure y'all do. I do. Too. Yeah, I mean, well, dude, it just it it. Sorry, Mike. I don't mean to keep interrupting you, man. No, you I, go ahead, uh, brother. I was just going to say, you know, when Nebraska is not good, shit, did I just freeze up on y'all? Can y'all hear me? I can hear, I can you. hear you, but uh, you're crazy. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. You just look like one of them dummies that we're making talk. <laughs> <laughs> when Nebraska is not good, it lessens the history with Oklahoma in the past. It doesn't, you know, you still can go back to those games, and they obviously are still fun to watch, and they were, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that they were any less at the time. But, you know, nobody's talking about Nebraska anymore. So nobody thinks back to the <laughs> Oklahoma-Nebraska games yeah. like they used to. Exactly. And and us Oklahoma fans can sympathize with Nebraska because look what we went through in the 90s. No, I I mean, I, I, absolutely. I mean. Absolutely. So, now, they're going through it a little longer than we went through it, thank God. But they, yeah. uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Nebraska's problem is they've just been middling too. It's not like they just bottomed out and went two and nine or anything, but they were like a um, number of years they were like eight and four, right? Uh-huh. Yes. It's just like oh yeah. They weren't bottomed out enough. Uh sometimes you just have to hit rock bottom like Alabama did with Mike DeBose and shit, man. Yeah. And Mike Shula. <laughs> <laughs> Where they're like, screw this shit. We're going to change this. We're going to go out and buy the most expensive coach we can get. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't y'all have Francione one year? Yeah, we had uh, Francione for a few years. Uh, I think it was 
he was here for what, maybe two or three seasons. And uh, we got put on probation. And he told those players, and back then, you know, if you didn't transfer at a certain time, you were screwed. You had to stay with that team back in the day. And he told those players to hold the rope and that he would stay. Well, they held the rope and missed their window to transfer, and then Franchoni hauled ass. Yeah. And that's why we hate Franchoni so bad, because he screwed us players big time. That, he seemed like he was kind of weird anyway, if, from what yeah, I Yeah, he got caught up in some some kind of real estate fraud or something down here in Tuscaloosa. Mm-hmm. So uh, not only did he go out there and get his ass beat by Oklahoma, 77 to nothing, uh, but he also got in some legal trouble down here in Alabama as well, I think. Him and Rich Rodriguez, too. You know, we was going to hire Rich Rodriguez before Nick Saban. People forget that. We had actually offered a job to Rich Rodriguez, and he actually took the job, but then at the last minute decided to turn it down, and then Alabama had to go on another search. Thank yeah. God for that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why, but I I liked Rich Rod, even though he coached for West Virginia, but I liked him. <laughs> For some reason, yeah, he actually done great at West Virginia. He's probably one of the best head coaches they ever had. He had him in the contention for the national championship game that one year, and he lost to Pittsburgh in the last game and screwed him. Mm-hmm. So he he was a good coach. He just picked the wrong job to go to. He went to Michigan after Lloyd Carr got pushed out. Yeah, you remember know, because Lloyd Carr lost to Appalachian State that year. Oh he, yeah, one of the biggest upsets of it, of all time, and. uh Lloyd Carr was behind the scenes, you know, sabotaging shit like Phil Former used to do at Tennessee. I hate mm-hmm. Phil Former, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to find a sore spot on me, it's Phil Former. <laughs> yeah, Rich Rod was mid at Michigan, but I don't think Michigan done him any favors. Scott, yeah. uh, I think he ended up going to Arizona and being the head coach for a time too, didn't he? I think so. If, if I remember right. And then after he went to Arizona, I think he went to uh, maybe was it, uh, Louisiana Monroe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And now he's the head coach at Jacksonville State here in Alabama. Yeah. Uh, and they actually done pretty good last year. Jacksonville State, I think, made a bowl game. Mm-hmm. In their first yeah. year, or their second year in Division One football. As a matter of fact, our new D- uh, D.C. come from Jacksonville State, Zach Alley. If y'all don't mind, y'all can jump out of the chat and smash that like button for me and Mike. It'll uh, encourage more people to come up in here. YouTube will push us out. We've been running for about an hour and 17 minutes. So we'll probably be dipping up out of here in a little bit, but we'll stay around for a little while longer as long as Mike feels like putting up with us. Oh, hey, hey, Jesse, you know I love coming on your show, man. <laughs> That's, we'll, we'll, we'll have to chop it up this weekend, get alive, and that way to make up for the one I – I arranged with you and Killer the other day that I had to had to cancel out on. David Wood said Nebraska and Iowa are not on anyone's top ten places to move. I guess that's true. I've never been to Nebraska or Iowa. It's, so I don't know how bad it is. Uh, cornfields, cornfields, cornfields. Did I mention cornfields? <laughs> <laughs> Hope there's an outhouse around there somewhere eating all that corn and chits. But there is one when I was, <laughs> when I was driving a truck, I'd run across I eighty a lot through Nebraska. And there's one I want to say is Grand Island, Nebraska. There's a uh, old timey covered bridge that covers the interstate that, that goes across the interstate. Now that's pretty cool. And I've been to Lincoln several times. But yeah, corn, 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 corn. But good people, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. People in Nebraska and I were good people. You got, and the people in Iowa, you got to know, yeah, Kearney, Kearney Nebraska. Uh, you, people in Iowa, they have a real dry sense of humor, and it looked like when they was weaned off their mama's boob, they was weaned on a sour pickle, because they don't <laughs> smile. <laughs> I think I think I was emasculated by Nebraska a little bit, because <laughs> Probably. I, I read a story back in the day where Iowa actually wanted to be the Cornhuskers and Nebraska stole their nickname. So they had to come up with something else. Now I don't know if that's true or not, but that's a story that I read. Maybe Scott Schrader or, or uh, Andy Rathman can tell us whether that's true. Did Iowa originally have the Cornhusker name? Cause I was reading a college football history book 
And they said, Iowa was the Cornhuskers first, and y'all took the name too. And then Iowa said, we're going to have to get our own name because we want to be the same nickname as Nebraska. Uh, history think- That's a good history nugget right there. Mike likes telling historical stories, so Mike will appreciate oh, yeah. that. Oh, yeah. And David Wood is right. Uh, it's flat, but it's got a lot of good pheasant hunting up there. I've been pheasant hunting in Nebraska, too, with, with my Uncle Earl. I never went pheasant hunting. It's a good food. Oh, it's 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 a it, it it's a blast. Mm, I have to try that. Um, Scott Schrader says, "Hey, outlaw, what are you thinking about the Alabama game in Camp Randall this year in Wisconsin?" Yeah, Alabama hasn't been to Camp Randall since nineteen. I think it's like nineteen forty six or something. Which game is that, Jesse? <laughs> it's like right after World War Two. We played Wisconsin. Mm. In Camp Randall in 1940-something, and uh, we lost. And they, we'd never beat Wisconsin until here recently when we played them in that uh, kickoff classic that we beat them pretty good in. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think we're tied with them one-to-one. So we never won in Camp Randall. We've only played there once. We didn't get a return <laughs> home game on that series, by the way. I don't know why Wisconsin didn't come to Tuscaloosa in the 1940s. I probably wouldn't want to come to Tuscaloosa either, but. Um, (laughs) but yeah um i look forward to alabama winning their first game in camp randall that's what you're asking i think we can take wisconsin what do you think mike i think you will uh about the only trouble that y'all would remotely have with wisconsin uh wisconsin got our former running back tall wee walker uh I don't know why we let him go last year. I really don't. Now we see why Killer Breeze dipped out on. So he's back here. Well, there he is. Back here stuffing my gullet. Back here <laughs> smoking the wacky weed and drinking Budweiser or something. No, I gave up the juice a long time ago. The weed, you know. <laughs> yeah. That's where he was yesterday when we was trying to get in touch with him. He claimed he was helping the neighbors move. He was out there seeing pink elephants and giraffes. <laughs> Tambourines and elephants uh, are playing in the band. <laughs> I, that is a different category of drug. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he lives out there in the RV park. They probably got a lot of shrooms out there. Him and old Neckbeard, Jonathan Lewis, probably up there doing shrooms. From your mouth to God's ears, man. <laughs> but leave that shit alone. <laughs> I plead in defense. You know, Breeze, when when you was over there at your ice box, I don't know why that scene from Friday jumped to my head when he said, How come every time I'm in the kitchen, you in the kitchen? <laughs> <laughs> Every everybody knows, everybody knows the kitchen is where everything goes down in the house. The kitchen is the heart of the home, my man. That's it. The kitchen is the heart. Andy Rathman says, Yes, I would did originally have the corn husker nickname, and Nebraska took it too. And I wait, wait, wait. I would have changed theirs. I would have if I was I wouldn't have changed mine. I would have made Nebraska change theirs. Hold on a second. Is Scott calling me fat? Is that what's going on here? Is Scott Schrader calling me fat? He's telling me I'm in the kitchen again. What's up with that? Is this your way of calling me fat, Scott? Is that what's going on here? I told you he's out there smoking some shit, man. He's got the munchies. He's like the damn um, the gang in the mystery machine, you know. <laughs> you know they eating all sorts of crazy food, seeing ghosts. Their damn dog talks to them. <laughs> that damn cartoon man! All them cartoon characters were high that as was hell. Man. <laughs> that was that was a subliminal message from hell in that cartoon, wasn't That's it? That's right, man. Daphne always disappeared and shit, man. You know what she's doing? Mm-hmm. She's Daphne there, was a hoe. She, she's out there getting pimped by Fred. Yeah, Daphne <laughs> was a hoe, man. Everybody knows that. <laughs> Fred was a Fred was the icy pimp. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they're, they're eating all sorts of crazy food, man. They're putting ice cream on their pizza and shit. Yeah, only stone people do. That. Hey, David Wood is saying that 
David Wood says that IT corporate suggests microdosing mushrooms to their employees. Well, let me tell you something. I know of somebody <laughs> <laughs> that has microdosed mushrooms and Whoa. they still, I don't know what the whole thing about the micro is because it's still, you know, I'm just saying it seems like an excuse to get high to me. <laughs> and what, what is microdosing mushrooms? What yeah, what's well, microdosing? The idea is, well, well, actually, I should, you know, in all in all fairness, there are, there, it's very popular. Well, like in the, sniffing in the a fart in a, in a heated car or something? What is it? No, it's, it's taking these psychedelics <laughs> at extremely low doses, the micro dose. And the dose is supposed to be small enough to where you don't feel any kind of recreational high from it, but it still gives you benefits. A lot of people say it helps with anxiety and depression big time. I mean, a lot of PTSD vets are having a lot of success microdosing psilocybin, which is the active analgesic or excuse me, not analgesic, the active ingredient in um, magic mushrooms. It's what makes you trip. So, so just, um, take also, just take a little, take little bit of it. Is it a good thing? Yes. It's taking a good a, thing take take just a little bit? Well, that's what they say, and you, you know, and I mean, a lot of people that claim that they had debilitating PTSD and anxiety say that, that it's, been mir it's been a miracle for them and that they don't, they've taken the small enough dose to where they don't get high at all. They just get these benefits. My point is I've taken the small doses that are supposedly micro doses and I still get high. So um, it didn't Mike, work for me. I tried it. <laughs> you like it. Up. And I don't like to trip. Green men. <laughs> I don't like tripping. Lightweight. I don't No, There's nothing light about the, you know. <laughs> We could tell stories, man. It, it ain't nothing to be proud of. I don't, miss, I don't mess with stuff, man. I don't mess with that stuff. <laughs> oh, you're saying you're a lightweight? Yeah. Okay. Well, that makes sense. I, I, I mean, yeah, you said that you don't you don't like to mess with that stuff. That's right. Yeah. I, I people people think I'm a liar when when I tell them my age, and I I've never even smoked a joint in my life. I mean, I didn't do anything until I was in college. I I never saw anything in high school. And, Sorry about that. I, uh, that I did enough. I did enough in ecstasy in in Baton Rouge for for the for a small Russian army. I'm sorry, Andy Rathman did the Mister Mac, Mister Gar, Mister Garrison. Andy Rathman did one of the, that guy from South Park. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. South Park, another great show. <laughs> on weed. Have you seen that new documentary, Quiet on the Set, about Nickelodeon and how they were molesting all those kids, those child actors? Uh, I no, I didn't. Big Cajones Kelly saying I'd rather roll on MDMA. Let me let me tell you, Big Cajones, um, if it was uh, <coughs> 1992, that the answer to that would be yes, but not anymore, man. Too old for that shit now. You have to inform me of what MD, MDMA is because That's I'm ecstasy. sort of ignorant of that. That's ecstasy. You can tell I don't do hard drugs because I don't know what the hell yeah, you're talking about. <laughs> I thought that when he said MDMA, I thought they had a new telethon one. It's it's ecstasy. It's what the kids today call Molly. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know about Molly. So I that's MDMA. Lot, I do Uber on the side and I pick up a lot of college students. I talk about their... They talk about everything from me. Yeah, I, you know, I could idiots. probably be a, a, a very successful narc if I wanted to be. They're idiots. <laughs> MDMA is uh is Molly, ecstasy, tabs, and all that shit. As you can see, Big Cajones Kelly has all the adjectives for all the drugs. Because his crazy and Cajun ass, he probably ain't no telling what he's dabbling in down there. Now he's just naming now he's just naming ecstasy tabs from like from <laughs> yesteryear. Blue dolphins, Jesus. Blue so, like, like a Scooby Doo shit. White oh. diamonds, Mitsubishi's, all that. Chocolate chips. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn, Jesse, we're in the wrong business. <laughs> no, what? We're in the no, wrong business. No, you're in business. the right business. 
No, no, no. You're in the right business. The, the other right. business is the wrong business. It'll lead you down that road. It, it'll be I'll, a fashion I'll admit, before you know it. I'll admit my daddy was a product of the 1960s, 70s long haul owner operator truck driver well, there you go <laughs> he took uh he had a a second driver in a cigarette pack that's all i'm going to say i'm changing the subject for a second i want to ask you about something i talked about yesterday what do y'all think about <laughs> cam newton saying that he's never going to attend the heisman trophy ceremony as a heisman trophy winner you know they usually attend the ceremony he said he will never attend a Heisman Trophy ceremony because they wouldn't let his father attend when they were supposedly paying Cam Newton to play for Auburn. Well, who cares? Who cares? I, I could care less. <laughs> I care because that son of a bitch stuck it to us down here. <laughs> <laughs> He shouldn't have played in that Alabama game. He shouldn't have played in the SEC title game. He shouldn't have played against Oregon in the national title game. You know how the NCAA drags their feet on shit all the time? Mm -hmm. How does it they push that case right through? Because eyeballs on TV, that's why. That may, it hurt their financial package if Cam Newton wasn't playing in those games. Of course. Of course. Yep. And that's why the NCAA is in the position they are now, because they didn't want to share none of this money. They could have probably shared this money a little bit and patronized these these uh, relatives and these 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 young men, but they weren't even willing to patronize. And now they they're going to end up going under because of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah it don't it. That, that don't bother me, Cam. Mate. Hell, hell, Earl Campbell don't go to him. <laughs> what? <laughs> it ain't hurting me. <laughs> Big so Kelly, said, Kelly says, "Give Reggie his Heisman back if Cam has his." Yeah. Oh uh, well, true. yeah. Reggie should have his Heisman. I mean, he Reggie never should. should. Back. If Cam's got his, why had not Reggie got his? <laughs> well, OJ still has his. Yep. OJ ain't got shit. Dude, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I, I, because I heard, I know you, y'all were talking about OJ in the in the outlaw posse chat on on, and this may not be politically correct, and I, I could give a shit. I was watching, because he died, Netflix started recommending the 30 for 30 OJ made in America, which I had seen before. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know if I missed it the first time when it originally came out or if they're showing a different version, because I feel like there's no way I missed it, or if they're showing a different version now that he's gone. But they showed her neck wound when he slit her. her and do when I tell you... The gap in her neck is like that. You can see her spine, her esophagus. Oh, you can see, I mean, dude, it is, he he damn near took her head off. And damn. the same thing with Ron Goldman. So I know everybody's wanting to feel, you know, start. To, I, I actually heard, I saw USC fans talking about how he, great of a Trojan he was, like, Give me a break, man. That dude is a double murdering piece of shit, and he and he deserves no peace, none. And he sort of basically admitted to it when he wrote a book that said, "This is how I would have done it if I'd killed him." Well, in the documentary, in the documentary, his agent basically admits that he admitted it to him. <laughs> Big Kahane Kelly said, "OJ fit into his casket like a glove." <laughs> if it don't fit, you must have quit. <laughs> so, tacked, so well, and then everybody says that shit. Well, his glove didn't fit. That's horseshit, man. He's an actor. Sure. Anybody can pretend like a glove don't fit. You can give well, me the biggest glove in the world that goes on Shaquille O'Neal's hands, and I can pretend like that some bitch don't go on my hand. Well, not Anybody only that, can pretend, man. Not only that, apparently OJ had was was known throughout his friends for having horrible rheumatoid arthritis in his hands, and he stopped taking his arthritis medicine like two or three weeks before he had to put on the glove. And 
apparently his hands were swollen. He couldn't even he couldn't even bend his barely bend his fingers because they were so swollen because he'd stopped taking. So there was no way that glove was ever going to fit. Chris Darden, the, the guy that made the decision to try to glove on, was apparently the only one on the entire prosecuting team that 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 one that they all told him not to do it. And um, the glove and Mark Furman, you know, is basically why he got off. But God dang, man, when you see just the violence that what he did to her, it's just uh, it just. It's unbelievable, man. I can't believe yeah, I, that guy never, never. Well, never ended up getting because he ended up going to prison. Not I enough. Yeah, I Not guess enough. He was, he was kidnapping some guy that had his had some of his memorabilia. I think yeah. so. Yeah, but that wasn't enough. Uh, that wasn't should, enough. He should have suffered. He, he lived. Suffered. He lived. Good yeah. number. He lived at least 10, 15 years before he ended up going to prison, and. And when he did go to prison, it wasn't the kind of prison he should have gone to. It wasn't, you know, it was uh, unbelievable, man. One of the Martha, Martha Stewart prison, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that documentary is awesome because it also brings you right back to the to the political and racial climate of of Los Angeles in particular, particular in the early '90s with the Rodney King and mm -hmm. trial and the riots and all that shit. And uh, man, just crazy, crazy times, man. I remember yeah, all of that. I, I remember exactly where I was when OJ broke loose onto the highway. I was in, I was in the break room at, at my job, and they were watching the TV in the break room. And not to be an ass or stereotype or single anybody out, but all the black people and minorities cheered that decision. I'm like, dude, I wouldn't care if OJ was black, purple. Yellow, what color, whatever color he was, the dude done that shit. Oh, and yeah. I was gonna cheer him getting off. If she had been a black woman, they wouldn't have been cheering that shit. Mm -hmm. They've been all about him going to jail. And mm -hmm. they can they can call me a racist or whatever. Actually, they're the ones that's racist because they wanted a murdering ass black guy to get off just because he killed a white woman. Yep. <laughs> it was just the you know, and I'll say this, man, to be fair, like I've been on the other side of the of the judicial system in this in this country and I know some of the shit that happened to me and um you know man there's some dirty people man that have a lot of power in this world and they abuse it and they abuse it so it doesn't justify anything but it explains a lot Yeah I can tell you exactly 1989 what M What's up, yeah. 1989M? He's our resident Michigan Wolverine. He says OJ sympathizers are just as bad as him. They are out in full full force, deranged lunatics. That they are. Well, I had a girl at my work today. I was talking about the same thing I just brought up here because it's just it burned into my memory last night. And then one of the girls at, at, at the office today was like, yep, yeah, it's just like the OJ thing. You'll never know. He took it to his grave. I'm like, no, no, no. We know. He's, we know. He's Orenthal, the bus driving murderer. That's what he is. He's Why gay. would he take off and go down the interstate and run from police if he wouldn't? Exactly. Dude, the DNA evidence alone, you can't. His blood, drops of his blood where his hands were cut. He basically dripped it from the from where from the murder scene to his bedroom like there's mm -hmm. they doc, they got pictures they got it they it's his blood her blood and ron goldman's blood is in his bronco is in his house it's like yep. on him it's on his clothes it's just like it is the it is the there it is the most but it became a trial on tv lapd and a trial against los angeles it, 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 that's what i'm saying it like yeah. This guy is so lucky. He's so guy. He's so damn lucky. And I give I it did. to him. He was he was brilliant too. In in you know he deserves credit for that too because he was a big reason. Part of the reason why he got off. And when they mm -hmm. come to his house, what was it? He said he was playing golf at three o'clock in the morning. Yeah, uh, so he, like he had that. different. He had different excuses. That's the thing. And he just it just. It's it's insane that he well, got I guarantee, acquitted. I guarantee if one of one 
one of us three had done that shit, we'd be so far into the jail we would have never seen daylight well, again. It's just like Kill Breeze brought up, and I forgot all about the Mark Thurman thing was happening about the same time. They didn't want to convict this guy no matter what because it was a black on white crime and they they felt like it would cause some riots. They just got over the whole riot. Was the riot situation before that? Yep. Rodney yes. King and all that. Rodney King. They just got over that shit. So they had their mind made up that they were going to let OJ Simpson off. My opinion. They weren't going to have another riot. Well, dude, one of the jurors, one of the jurors is is interviewed in the documentary, and she they asked her, was was the OJ verdict payback for Rodney King? And she said, absolutely. And they, and they asked her, they said, Well, is that you think that's fair? Is that justice? And she went, <laughs> you know. So they also removed a lot of jurors that were white from the jury, jury pool. Whatever the actual juries that were on the jury, some of them were white and they removed them. So they're the ones that made it about race. Not mm. me, not you, not Mike. They did. No, absolutely. <laughs> and that should have been a real big red flag right there for what was to come from the Skittle shitters in Los Angeles. Because that's the kind of shit they do out there. If he had been somewhere else, if he'd been maybe in another state. Maybe in Texas or somewhere like that. Maybe he wouldn't have got off. I don't know. There's no telling, man. I no mean, there's no telling. Today, it wouldn't surprise me if he got off anywhere. You got so many damn people out there now, they're just so afraid to voice their real opinion. Yep. Well, the thing is, the big joke of it all is that OJ is the most – non-black black black guy like that's they talk about it throughout the documentary about how like the black community did was mad at him because he had he had basically left them for white america living in white neighborhood of los angeles Mm -hmm. exclusive white neighborhood there was no other black people living in that neighborhood apparently back then um he didn't he didn't claim his blackness until it got him you know helped him in that trial so it's just like the what it was really about was his wealth not his skin color his money got him off that off that deal yep you know it's like the old michael jackson thing with the child molestation stuff you know he wasn't really black either (laughs) michael jackson didn't want to be black literally (coughs) why he done all that shit to his face and he also but wanted. I'm starting to see some reports surface from this whole P Diddy thing. Um, a guy that was head of security uh, for P Diddy was also the head of security when Michael Jackson died. Really? And, yeah, and uh, just some some eerie stuff going on. They was talking about Michael Jackson. You know, it called Sony out uh, for being evil. That the Jewish people that run Sony are evil ass people and stuff, and they were trying to take him out. And uh, some of the stuff they're saying, man, I'm, I'm starting to come around to it a little bit. I'm like, maybe Michael Jackson was set up. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. The P. Diddy thing is crazy. I don't know what to believe. Because if you believe what you're hearing, I mean, this dude was, uh, uh, you know, really living some double and triple lives in front of everybody's mm-hmm. face. Yeah. Narcissist. He pissed he pissed somebody off in the inner circle something fierce. Cause they're coming after him hardcore, man. Mm-hmm. I need to watch that uh documentary called Quiet on the Set about the Nickelodeon situation. Some pretty check that out. Pretty foul stuff. <laughs> about how these groom they groom these kids, these child actors, they get them in there and they do shit to them. Yeah. So that's on Net Netflix Killer Breeze. Uh huh. I'll have to check that out later. To see, I think quite on the set is on Netflix too. Okay, it's awesome, man. It's called OJ. I'm not sure, but it might Made be in Man. America. OJ Made five, in America. It's a five part series, and it's awesome. I mean, Thunder okay. you finished those Prince was also killed. I don't remember what happened with Prince, but Fentanyl killed Prince. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Fentanyl's and everything now. That's why I would never start smoking weed. It's in weed and 
all on the pills and shit. I'm like, man, everything's got fentanyl on it. It does. It does. Quiet on the set. Let's see where it's where that's being played. Quiet on the set. Streaming. Let's see. Oh, it's on. Uh, it's not on Netflix. Damn it. Scott Schrader said Prince overdosed. Yeah. Yeah. On fit, on fit fit <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, man. That's a fact. Let's get quiet on the setup here. Thunder, are you saying it says there's five episodes of Quiet on the Set and it will piss you off when you watch it? Yeah, it will. So, so give me the breakdown exactly what is Quiet on the Set about? The child actors on Nickelodeon, um, the guys that you know, the handlers behind the scenes that are supposed to help when the parents ain't there, stuff like that. Um, just people that will generally work in hand in hand with the children on the set at Nickelodeon. Like, I don't know if you've ever heard of this the show called uh, Sweet Life of Zach and Cody. I think that's what it's called. I've heard of that. Or Drake, Drake Bell was the actor that got molested. Um, oh, he actually pretty much alluded to some graphic things that he was made to do. Um, without getting graphic. I'm pretty sure y'all know exactly what happened to him. But <clears throat> mm. hold on, I want to pull this up. So it's a five part series. That's 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 terrible, man. It's on HBO Max. If you got HBO Max, it's on HBO Max. All right. So um okay. where did y'all hear the rumor about Nebraska to the SEC? It's been something that's been floating around the internet for a little while. It's a few sources talking about Nebraska and the Big Ten sort of having some not-so-nice conversations about that. Nebraska's academics not being up to par to being mm-hmm. in the Big Ten. Nebraska lost their AAU status after they were in the league a couple of years. They haven't been able to get it back. And uh, Nebraska's been ranked – the lowest academic institution in the Big Ten for the last two or three years. But like I said, Mike, somebody's got to be last. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Damn, I mean, what the hell, man? You're going to kick everybody else last? You won't have no teams left. But the whole AAU thing really aggravates me because it's horseshit. It's like they're trying to act like academics play a part in this shit, and they don't. No. Uh, yeah, they can say, well, our academic standards are higher for our students. We have to have 3.8. And y'all students only have a 3.5. Well, it doesn't matter if it's 3.5 or 3.8 if someone's fixing the grades for them. Mm-hmm. You can have a 4.0. If someone's helping you do the work, then it don't matter. You're not really qualifying for that university. Notre Dame used to do it back in the 80s with Lou Holtz. They had to call it Tudor Gate. Lady was actually right. asking for sexual favors from the players and stuff. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> That's right, Notre Dame. I took that shot. Y'all thought I forgot about that shit, didn't you? <laughs> Touchdown, Jesus, baby. <coughs> That's fucking funny, man. Not to mention them damn... You know, heard about all them Catholic priests and things they did them altar boys. <laughs> wow. Had them altar boys, hey, let me tell had you. Altar boys on their knees at Sunday Mass and after Sunday Mass. As I can, I can tell you this. I actually that shit happened in my parish, dude. I know some people that 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 uh, suffered from that. It's it's terrible, man. I wish Daddy was still alive. Y'all y'all liked him when he'd talk about Notre Dame because he called them the fish eaters. <laughs> what? Daddy, when he was, he called them the fish eaters. Daddy couldn't stand Notre Dame. I know why they broke y'all. They broke y'all's forty-seven game win streak. Well, it it wasn't because of that. It, it well that that was that was part of it. But, but the sure biggest re- <laughs> but the biggest reason was in the seventies when <laughs> when uh, we wasn't on TV a lot, and it wasn't because of the probation. It seemed like. It, Notre Dame was on every big game Saturday. Yeah, screw that. 
and it pissed yeah. Daddy off. <laughs> Scott Schrader said the new talking point for the week on a bunch of podcasts has been Nebraska to the SEC and the Aggies to the Big Ten. I would love for the Aggies to leave. There's some rumblings going on. People have all come in and say, oh, that can't happen. Yeah, well, nobody thought Texas and Oklahoma would go to the SEC either, did they? That started a fucking, excuse my language, that just started a free-for-all, man. You know, I can't the understand. Texas Oklahoma brands are so big that they just shook the whole college football world up. Well, <laughs> whether people want to admit that or not, it's the truth. I was about to say, nobody will ever – and, and you know, most people are not going to admit it, but you, you know, at that point, every conference had two, maybe three powers, right? And mm-hmm. now, now you 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 took the top two from, you know, <laughs> and and dropped them into the the strongest conference, you know, mm-hmm. and not just two good programs, man. His, historically, good. You know, um, well, I hate even giving Texas that kind of credit because their their consistency has been crap, considering what they. One thing Texas has is like y'all said before, they just got money, man. Yeah, that's it. They got money from businesses that have nothing to do with athletics, and they They have at their athletics, and then they just throw it away because they never win anything. They have a ton of money, and. I mean, do you can go, you know, Texas is a massive state and it doesn't matter. You can go from the panhandle up north down to the valley in Brownsville and you're going to see people that ain't never spent a day in college in their life decked out in UT gear. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, so they just got money coming in, booster money, merchant money. You know, it's it's crazy the amount of money that you, you know. And I think that I'm pretty sure they're endowed as, as well. So, mm-hmm. um their their money is off the charts and that's why it's ridiculous that they have not done they have not been more consistent they've had some great teams over the years going all the way back to the 60s but they've They've also had a lot of mediocre years a lot of mediocre years in mixed in between the 60s and the in the and their run they they made in the 2000s Under oh, OU yeah. Center says Notre Dame also ripped off OU's play like a champion sign that they they sure tapped, did that they tap before they go out. Oh, yeah, they did. That's yeah. absolutely Oklahoma property, and they and Notre Dame ripped that shit off. Yep. Notre Dame tries to say y'all ripped him off. <laughs> well, we can prove it. We yeah, we got receipts. <laughs> As Dion says, we got receipts. Big Honey's Kelly said the faggies are running from Big Brother. They, they need to. They just go, man. Just get out of here. They, all they do is just just tear – Is they just ruin things from time to time. That's the only thing that they do. They play spoiler here and there. They're the best joke. thing Texas A&M could do right now is not leave because they're going to get they're gonna get crucified. They, it's going to be just like everybody say, – y'all saying, man, they're going to think they're running from Texas. Well, mm-hmm. that's, that's why I hope they do it. I, they deserve to be crucified. Okay. They've been – that just like Missouri, they've been in here. They 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 got into the SEC. First of all, Missouri fans and AM fans should get down on their knees and blow Texas and Oklahoma whenever they ask for it. Because if it wasn't for UT and Oklahoma not going to the SEC back in 2000, what was it? 11, 2000, yeah, whatever, yeah, whatever, whatever year it was, they wouldn't be in the SEC. So okay. Missouri, and, and, Missouri was like option B. Yeah. <laughs> so was AM. Yeah. Yeah. So and, was AM. And now they want to try to act like because they've been in the SEC for a few years, that all of a sudden the the history of what they were when we were in the same conference doesn't exist. Like it, yeah. it, it exists and it's pretty lopsided. Well, I'm not, not trying to discourage Oklahoma or Texas fans when they come in the SEC, but since 1992, when we started accepting new members, Arkansas and South Carolina, no team that's joined the SEC that wasn't a part of the original group has ever won an SEC title. Uh, and that's going back to 1992. 
Oh yeah. I tell everybody that, you know, you know, just to let them know that if Oklahoma and Texas does come in here and win an SEC title, that is a big accomplishment. Mm-hmm. Oh, not yeah. To, not, I'm not trying to aggravate and troll and scare y'all. I'm trying to say oh, that no, 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 no. that would be a big accomplishment if one of y'all can win an SEC title. Y'all can take that and show it to Missouri and Texas A&M and say, damn, what took y'all so long? And I think Oklahoma. <laughs> what the hell y'all been doing this whole time? Y'all had a 10-year head start on <laughs> Texas and Oklahoma. Yeah. And you ain't won. You ain't won the SEC. Texas A&M ain't even been the SEC title game yet. There's no doubt in my mind that Oklahoma or Texas will win an SEC championship before Missouri and A&M. That will absolutely be the case. And I got news for people, man. Like Oklahoma's not planning on coming in here to re- repeat Missouri and Texas A&M's existence in the SEC. It was no. never going to be like that, you in know. Fairness, I'm, I'm not, in fairness to Missouri, they made the title game twice. They they've done better than A and M for sure, and they've done, they've done well. Everybody wants to talk about we should have just gotten Texas A and M and kicked Missouri out. No, you should have not got Texas A and M and got Missouri, obviously, because Missouri made it twice. Yeah, so. <laughs> nah, I don't know, man. I just Arkansas, again. South Carolina, and Missouri, three of the four teams that joined the SEC have made the SEC title game at least once. Only one team has it. It's A&M. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, like I was saying a while ago, I think I think Oklahoma will get it before Texas does, even though Missouri's that's, been – And Well, if history is any indication, that's – yeah, that should be how it goes. Hey, I mean, you know we don't have divisions this year, right? Oh, yeah. So you know what that can mean? You know it really piss off the SEC um, – Old guard is if Texas and Oklahoma made the SEC title game. Oh, that was oh my god. <laughs> let's not let's not start sucking each other's dicks just yet. I mean, I, yeah. I think we got a little way to go. <laughs> you know. Hey, I'm trying to get some donations, man. <laughs> There's a little money dollar sign at the bottom. Yeah, show love. Show some love. We'll post your comment up and talk about it. <laughs> Killer Bree says he's rusty, so I'm going to test him. There's a bunch of people in here with badges like Sean James, Big Cajones, Kelly, Fred Bagley. Um, who else? I know Killer Breeze and Mike's got theirs. Um, who else got a badge in here? A bunch of them. Anyway, can you tell us what that badge is all about, Killer Breeze? That badge is you being deputized into the outlaw posse. It only costs two ninety nine a month. That's half a bottle of water a week for the outlaw. <laughs> it comes with perks. You get to see my pretty mug from time to time. You get to hear <laughs> us drop a few, you know, irreverent f bombs and maybe talk some politics. But we also talk sports. You also get some some uh, a lot of these live streams go to members only so you'll be able to see those that's all right david when we get when the season kicks in somebody will donate a membership and we'll uh we'll make sure you're up at the top of the list heck yeah brother <laughs> yeah you're poor but not that poor 299 a month 75 cents a week <laughs> that's just a half a bottle of water man come on now you can give me 75 cents <laughs> you'll be a random four horsemen shout out as well as possible be the comment of the day. Comment of the day, baby. Kill the day. Just won the comment of the day. Twice. Twice. That's right. Actually, no, I think I think I've got th- I got three on the comment right. of the day. Three time, three time, three time comment That's of the right, day. right, baby. I think That's Jesse's right. got me in timeout because he ain't mentioned me one time on his four horsemen shot out in the week or so. No in a oh, while. I don't oh, think you're on, I don't think you're on the list in there anymore. Hey, hey, Scott, Scott Schrader is asking a great question. Yep. Scott wants to know if I think Oklahoma made a mistake letting Dylan Gabriel leave to go to Oregon. Uh, in a short answer, yes. But they had it was really the way that it went down, man, is you know. I don't know that it could have gone any other way. Like I would, I think the better question is, would I rather have Dylan Gabriel starting this year going into the SEC over Jackson Arnold? 
Oh, well, Jesse will tell you. I mean, Mike will too. I was saying this when people were giving him hell and calling for Jackson Arnold when he was playing at Oklahoma. Like the guy is the second. If, if I'm not mistaken, he's the second all-time passing yardage quarterback in college football. No, not second. He's top ten though. Maybe he's seventh. I don't know. Shit. He's he's but he's top ten passing all time in college. You don't do that without some skill. And, exactly. and he didn't have the same arm as Jackson Arnold. There's no doubt about it. But he had experience, and he, he knew how to win games, and he won damn near every time he was the starting quarterback. So, mm -hmm. you know, I would rather have him than not have him. I don't like the fact that Oregon's got him. And, yeah, it makes me a little nervous. But the, but the reality is this. If you're going to be recruiting five-star quarterbacks like Jackson Arnold, you know, they got to play, man. They have to play. And yep. I don't know if Jackson would have waited another year. So I doubt it. He might not. Look, I don't know. He might have waited. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, either. by the way, Mike, you made me think of something. Um, you was actually a four horseman shout out on one of those Oklahoma videos I just done here recently, about two videos ago. Oh, okay. Just so you know, you probably okay. just didn't watch the video. Are you talking about comment of the day? I, I don't know how to comment. I, I'm, I'm better at this right here than getting that, getting in the chat, and <laughs> I don't know why. I, 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 I can't type out words like I'm feeling, and when I do this, people can see like, hey, this dude's serious. You, you know what I mean, Breeze? Sure, absolutely. Mike's playing. He's playing possum. Actually, Mike's really very intelligent. All the stuff he's got up, and I, he's come a long way with his podcast. So don't let him fool y'all. <laughs> <laughs> he's smart. Mike, what's your uh, subscriber count at right now? Uh, three thirty. Yep. Five hundred to get monetized. You right yep. there, man. You right yep. there. Yeah, that's right. Dylan Gabriel put Oklahoma. I mean, that was the thing that I just found so disrespectful about the OU fans that, I mean, there's one guy, well, I'm not even going to name his name. He, I haven't seen him in our chat in a, in a while. But, I mean, you know, the things that they were saying about Dylan Gabriel, and I don't think people realize, like, if you think the year we went six and seven was bad, without Dylan Gabriel, we might not have won two games that year. So <laughs> That ain't no lie. He didn't have to come to Oklahoma. He was already at UCLA. He he followed Levy's dumbass to Oklahoma and and uh, you know and and he helped, and he saved us, man. It could have been a lot worse, you know. And the game he had against Texas was in, was one of the all time great Red River shootouts, man. Like <laughs> that, that that's game just, will be that's just what it is. It. Yeah, so, Fred Tagler remembers. I give you a full horseman shout out. Yeah, yeah, I believe you, outlaw. I, I, you just ain't been watching my video. Oh man, I tell you what, I, I've been trying to crank up. I, I, I imagine after my video today, I might he, lose subscribers. He busted, on, he busted himself. <laughs> I think Mike that. was Mike was the four Sooner Legends podcast was a four horseman shout out recently. Yeah, that's yeah. what I said. Yeah, I'm probably losing subs after the video I put out today. <laughs> what is it? Uh, it's uh, how Troy Aikman's uh, breaking his ankle against Miami in 85 benefited Oklahoma and Troy Aikman. Yeah. It now, did. Let, ben, Ben's how I got you on here, ben, or that I'm on here and you're on here. In 85, let's let, – let's, Let's pretend that Troy Aikman doesn't break his ankle. Jamel Holloway doesn't get to play. Do we still win the national championship in 85? Man, that's that's just so hard to tell. I It's hard for me to imagine what kind of offense Barry Switzer was planning on running with Troy Aikman long term because he wasn't going to run him wishbone no you can't. no, no. It, it's a proven fact barry was bringing a pro set to to OU. that's why he 
Right, but I, I, but I just, it's still, it's hard for me. Like he never really ran that. So it's just so hard for me to imagine Barry Switzer doing anything other than what I just saw all the time, which was the wishbone run to perfection when he had the right pieces. And so I, I don't know, man, that's a great question. I mean, yeah. now, now I, I, I say we don't because if you go back and look at the first three games, that OU played in that season. We played in Minnesota, K-State, and in Texas. Troy Aikman didn't light up the world other than no, K-State. No, 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 he didn't. And and if you remember K-State, they, they were like the bottom feeders of the Big Eight. They were like Baylor. No, they were the worst program in the country at one time. And then when we come when when Miami comes to town, you know, I still think that without Jamel Holloway, we don't we don't win the the, the national championship that year. I mean, I, I I can't disagree with that. You know, I I can't I can't disagree with that. I mean, you know, it still is Troy Aikman, and it's the best one of the best offensive minds in college football history. So, what could they have done? I don't know, man. Like it's, exactly. It's and, I'll and say the- this. I'll say this. It still makes me nauseous to this day thinking about Troy Aikman playing. Four years at Oakland, like I like, we got so robbed, you know. Yeah, but, but let me let me ask you this again, and I asked this in my video: Had Troy Aikman stayed all, all four years at OU, would he have been a number one draft pick the year he he went in the draft? Yeah, may, maybe not. Because maybe I, I, mean, I don't think he would then either, because. uh when he went to UCLA, you know, he had to set out for for a year in 86. And then 87 and 88. Uh, do you remember back in those days when UCLA was real good? And they was, it seemed you know, like. They, it, they have, uh, was it Terry Donahue? Was the Terry coach? Donahue, yes, right. sir. And they had a wide open And they offense. ran the West Coast offense. That's right. And. Um, I think it's like you said, Mike. I think it was a square hole. Uh, what a square hole with a with a circular peg or something. Yeah, trying to fit a square peg in a round hole. Yeah, that that kind of deal. And but uh, I was but my point I was trying to but my point I was trying to make is it benefited Oklahoma and Troy Aikman. Yeah, exactly. And, what I'm saying it, did, it just didn't fit. Yeah, yeah, and, and I, I think Troy could see that and trust why he left. I, and I said in my video, man, I got, oh, I got slammed. That to me, Troy Aikman didn't wasn't a good fit at Oklahoma. Big Cajones that. Kelly has a question for y'all. Yeah. It's right there. I'll let you read it out, Mike. Are y'all still confident in OU's line? I'm, you know what, uh, Ryan, I, I am just for the simple fact of who our O line coach is, Bill Bedenbo. Uh, we're going to get it together. We got, uh, we, he's not on campus yet. We're getting him, uh, this summer, Eddie Pierre Louis, the Haitian law firm. Uh, we also in this line, we got a uh, Garen Hatchett, uh, Isaiah Autry, um, Heath Ozeda. And I'm trying to think of that big kid from California. He's like six, six, three and three and a quarter. God, he's a big boy. So, now, what everybody's seeing right now is our D line eating this offensive line up. And that was in the first three days of practice, of spring practice. And I'm sitting here, guys, don't iron sharpens iron. These guys are going to be playing to, playing against each other from spring, summer camp, fall camp, up until them, them big, that defensive line ain't going to be wrecking that offensive line. For, for all throughout practice. I agree. I agree. Thunder OU Center agrees OU probably would not win a championship if Troy Aikman did not break his leg. Yeah, I don't I mean I can't disagree with that. Yeah, Sexton. Fred Fred Bagley said Jacob Sexton. Yeah, we got Sexton on there. Uh we did he we did lose uh Troy Everett uh until probably the end of fall camp. Uh, he's He had knee surgery, but it wasn't ACL related or anything. Uh, our English guy, 
Daniel Akinkumini. He's in an yeah. air cast on a scooter. Uh, so I he's... That. Huh? I heard about that. But but it's not major. Uh, he should be back for spring. And, but I, I'm confident just, just in what Bill Biedenboe, pro, the product he, he's produced, sent to the league and developed here at OU, I'm not worried. I'm not worried yeah. at all. But it is a now. Now I would be lying if I if I said it's not a little bit of a concern for me because of what we lost last year. Yeah, well, no matter how good the coach is, sometimes you ain't got the players to go with it. It's and they just that. offensive line is a group that that needs to play together a little bit before they really ever gel. And yeah, so no matter who it is, whether they're good or not, they're going to get considerably better the longer they play with each other so exactly no matter how good they can be it ain't going to be that good when they first start right Boys, I I look, this, but i gotta run man sorry mike i didn't mean to cut you off no there. no you go ahead i gotta run myself man i i'm set my belly's about to eat through my backbone <laughs> <laughs> jpc i appreciate the invite man y'all uh yeah. i'll be in yes, touch all right y'all take care Okay, all JPC, right, thanks for having me on, brother. Oh, you're getting your uh, channel information before you leave. Oh, you can find me at uh, YouTube at Sooner Legends Podcast, where I talk talk about historical stuff, new stuff. You can also find me on Twitter at Okie Cowboy 1969 All right, brother, go get that pimento cheese sandwich. <laughs> I sure will, brother. You take care now. All right, later. Later. That was Mike Wilkerson, a.k.a. Center Legends Podcast, along with Killer Breeze. And uh, there are the consummate Oklahoma boosters that come up in here from time to time. Earlier on, we had Jeff Payton in here as well. Um, if y'all ever want to be on the show live, just let me know. I'll, do, I'll send y'all an email ahead of time. My email is jesseclark425. Uh, at gmail.com. I can also be reached on Twitter at OCF Productions and uh, as well as on Facebook under Jesse Paul Clark, spelled J E S S E without the I. So, any other topics y'all want to touch on? Any future podcasts or topics that y'all want me to touch on? Just uh, drop it in the comment section or you can tell me right now before I get off of here. Y'all got anything else for me? Before we leave? Fred Bagley says, Troy was a weeble pin in a wee wobble hole. <laughs> I remember those weeble wobble toys when I was a kid growing up. I don't know if y'all ever had one of those. It might be before y'all's time. Good night, Outlaw, said David Wood. It's good to have you in here once again, David Wood. Scott Schrader is one of our Nebraska Cornhuskers in here tonight, as well as... Um, uh, Andy Rathman was in here. Hey, Outlaw, Nebraska, only Alabama like three or four times. Ah, no Alabama, Nebraska played in the 60s once, I think, or twice. Then they played in the 70s two or three times. Nebraska beat the shit out of us one time. From what I remember reading history books. I think Alabama's. I don't think Alabama leads the series with Nebraska like three to two or four to one or something like that, but I think Alabama actually leads. I'd love to play a game against Nebraska. I've never been to Lincoln. I've heard a lot of good things about Lincoln. And as we started to show with Nebraska and Texas A&M and veered off into all sorts of crazy shit from O.J. Simpson having a casket that will fit like a glove to talking about uh, Troy Aikman breaking his leg. Um, we talk about just about everything here, but we start off with Nebraska and Texas A&M, and in the end, what I'm thinking is, I think Nebraska's fan base is out of sorts and out of place in the Big Ten, in my opinion, to uh, surmise this topic. <laughs> I think Nebraska would fit better in the SEC, or even the Big 12, for that matter, than being the Big Ten. Yeah, they'd probably have to take a money, um, sort of a cut in money, to go from the Big Ten to the Big 12. But I don't think it would be such a big cut to the point where it would make you unhappy. I think Nebraska fans would be a lot happier not in the Big Ten, whether it be the SEC or the Big 12. 
I'd love to have them in the SEC. Alabama, Nebraska, home and home, that'd be two great trips. Memorial Stadium on game day is awesome. Thunder OU Sooner says Nebraska will be a great fit in the SEC. All the SEC has to do is kick out Missouri. I don't know if they'll kick out Missouri because Missouri made the SEC title game twice, as I said earlier. They've actually made the title game. Texas A&M, on the other hand, has not. Now, there could be contraction coming. Instead of the expansion, we could start, could start seeing teams get contracted out, like Vanderbilt, Mississippi State, and the SEC. Uh, Mississippi State, Starksville is <laughs> – have you ever been to Starksville? It's media death as far as eyeballs go. Uh, Vanderbilt, of course, they just never win. They're mostly an academic institution. Uh, so it would not surprise me if those two teams get contracted in the future. Scott Schrader says, yeah, I hated going to the Big Ten. It was like losing a best friend and leaving the Big 12. Yeah, it's the old Texas thing. You know, I think Texas ruined the Southwest Conference, and then they ruined the Big, the Big 12 Conference, and now they're coming to the SEC. Let's hope that history doesn't repeat itself and Texas ruins the SEC, right? Because that's why Colorado and Nebraska left, I know. Missouri and Texas A&M probably, too left the Big 12 because of the Texas Long Turds Network kind of deal where they didn't want to share money and revenue. When you're in a conference, Texas, it's called a conference for a reason. That means you share all the revenue. You don't get to have your own little Long Turd Network, but they did. People acquiesced to them and bowed down to them. Well, Nebraska and Colorado, Texas A&M, and Missouri got tired of that shit and left, and now you have what you have. Now they're coming to the SEC. Fred Bagley says when it goes to Super Conference, they will drop teams. I agree with that. I see that happening. But I also heard that they're going to be like 70 teams in the Super Conference, and they'll have 10 teams that can sort of play their way in, sort of like they're doing soccer and the World Cup thing or whatever, the FIFA or whatever they do, where they have teams that can play themselves in and play their self out. It'll probably be the top 50 or 60 that have permanent spots, and then the 20 teams that are sort of G5 and maybe Big 12 and teams like that, and ACC would probably uh, lose their uh, Division One status ever so often if they weren't up to standard. Mick Honey's Kelly says, long turd is money. Damn right it is. I am the nickname King. <laughs> Thought you was going to be in here tonight, but you didn't come up in here, did you? Let's see what we got here in private chat. <laughs> oh, Killer Breeze in here hit me up in the private chat. Talking about his knees. All right, guys and gals, I'm going to get up out of here. Like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Share me with your friends. If you ain't in the outlaw policy and don't have your, have your badge, as I said earlier, you can get that for two ninety nine months. That's just seventy five cents a week. It's just a half a bottle of water for the outlaw. Get your badge, you get deputized, possibly be for one of the four horsemen random shout outs, as well as be a comment of the day on the actual podcast. And with that, I'm out of here. KMCA to all the other teams. Class is now dismissed. <laughs>